theater nerds welcome to the bright side home theater podcast the home theater podcast it's all about the experiences the sights the sounds the scenes there it is oh <laughs> boy the sights and sounds this week mm, scenes. oh yes yeah. lots of scenes and uh <laughs> you said you already heard takeover tuesday we we're just talking about that so we we got a little bit into that today oh um, yes a little bit on what's to come yeah, yeah. Now, Deej, before we get into it, should I just check, though, having listened to Takeover Tuesday, is the sight of my AirPod Max bringing you out in hives? Is it, is it like post-traumatic oh, stress? <laughs> no, no. That I thought was just a funny story. And that's why yeah. I, I, I texted the guys. I'm like, oh, boy, what a morning, right? Like, I just thought that mm. was funny. And just couple that with the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. It's awful. It, it Awful. was a day, a day. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like these are small. You know, you shouldn't be able to no. just leave them, Deej. I mean, I blame you. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I, it, it, that's on me. And I said that yeah. when I said it. With, you did. With, you did. I'm like, that's on me. When stuff like that happens, most of the time, even anybody else that'd be like, they want to blame somebody else. It's like, you, most of your anger is on you. It should mm. be. I mean, because it's your fault. You left them behind. <laughs> that That doesn't happen. And that's why I like what made the, the airport situation like, oh, this ain't on me. And it's like, you know, even like I've, I've you know, your flights have been delayed. I've had situations like that where you go, oh, okay. You get the warning, you know, it's like, or situations happen. But when you're just standing there going, what <laughs> did, did we just, we didn't even know. We had to go ask somebody if we missed our flight. <laughs> yeah. Well, so bad. And then to get, and then to get, you know, horrendous customer service from mm. you know the, the gate agents whatever you call them over there is is just super not cool i was i was visualizing you know the um uh, planes trains and automobiles you know may i help you sir well you could start by wiping that rosy yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I, I was visualizing as i was listening oh. to it yeah i mean you know anyone anyone listening who's wondering by the way go go listen to takeover tuesday and listen to uh dj saturday morning <laughs> saturday day it was, oh, took yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. day. Took the whole day. Yeah, almost the evening too. Um, yeah, oh man, how long wow. is the flight back from to from Chicago to Rhode Island or to two Chicago? Hours. To, to, okay, and but what about to Boston then? Same again? Or, same thing. Or long? Yeah, it's okay. same thing. It's like mm -hmm. a minute's difference, if that. It's, oh, right. you, oh okay. you know, it, it's the same. It's two hours, um, and it's you know, it, it the flights aren't super expensive. It's not like. Kyle wrote me this morning and he gave me this big long explanation on what to do and document and send it in. And maybe the, I'm like reading the email was more work than I want to do to try and recoup my, like whatever the flight was 300 bucks or 400 bucks, right. For each of us, I think it was like three something. And then I upgraded to first class, which I lost on the second leg of the trip, but hundred bucks. So it's not it's not worth my time and energy i'm like mm. I, I don't care i really don't care i'm like yeah, it's yeah. i'm, I'm mad, the are, but yeah. <laughs> or i was but In the process of then doing that could make you madder and then that's yeah, not yeah. cool either is it it's just yeah. Let it go. yeah and that's that's usually how i am it's just like yeah you know just look forward just keep going stop mm -hmm. stop don't <laughs> don't look back and get angry just keep going forward and uh, uh -oh. going forward, we have a blast. I had a blast. What a great weekend. I got a blast coming up. I got great stuff. We're going to talk about this announcement in like two seconds um, once we get through all of this. Uh, what did you say? Did you see something in the chat? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jack uh, Jack Lee says, uh, every, hi, everyone. Hope you're well. Flying visit again. Waited to get on the plane home. Make sure, Jack, make sure, mate, they announce the departure. Okay? Exactly. Don't, don't do a DJ. <laughs> it, it, well, actually, don't make sure. Whether you hear no. it or not, go right up to him going, I'm getting on that plane. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, that's doors the only open, way to do it. There. <laughs> that's, trust me, that will never happen to me again, ever. Yeah. I'll be like, there's our gate. Where, what time? I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I've never known it happen. I, I must admit, yeah. all, you know, I've flown all over the world. I was flying before I could walk and, and like literally, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I've, you know, never known them do that. But the stories about, 
domestic US air travel mm. are legendary and legion. You know, there's so many stories that you see and of the horrors of of US inter yeah intercontinental travel yeah. um, and domestic air travel. That uh, that yeah, I mean, I, it sounds horrendous, and I've never encountered it either internationally or domestically. So yeah, I mean, I you, you did way better than I did. That's what I'm saying. I would have uh, more <laughs> right in my um my un, yeah unhappiness <laughs> yeah it's uh, that's that's an understatement yeah it's a little bit of unhappiness going on there um, but what are you gonna do you know yeah okay. what are you gonna you do? Go, yeah that's it again planes trains and automobiles just go with the flow like a twig on the shoulders of a mighty stream now <laughs> I, I was uh talking to john today i did have a planes trains and automobiles uh moment too uh my son and i, I hope it wasn't into... where's your other hand uh -uh. no <laughs> oh worse no oh. kind of so <laughs> on thursday we got in at like 9 30 in the morning so we had time to kill and we took a drive into chicago and walked the city and we had parked in a parking garage and my son is the um co-pilot so he's navigation and i'm like all right where are we going and I'm like literally pulling out it, you know, pulling out of a parking garage is very narrow and you don't have a lot yeah. of room. So I'm like looking, I'm like, which way am I going? Left or right? Left or right? And he goes, left, left. You got to go left. It's the only way we can go. Okay. So I turn left, but I turn like hard left into the road because there were people on the other side. And I'm like, it's a one way. So I'm on the road. And I'm driving down the road and people are beeping at me on the other side. And I'm like, now where are we going? He goes, We're taking a left at this intersection. I'm like, all right. Luckily, the light was green. It wasn't a one way. I was <laughs> driving down the road the wrong way and everybody's beeping at me. And I'm like, hey, everybody's beeping. Yay, look at me. And I'm like, all right, light's green. I just went right to the light, took the left, and I'm like, never coming back to the state again. Yes. <laughs> like, what the you're, hell? You're going the wrong <laughs> way. Exactly. How do they know That's which way John we're going? Said when I told them, he's like, you're going the wrong. How do you know where I'm going? You going to Mike's too? No. <laughs> I was like, what oh, the man. hell? I'm like, Joe, and he's cracking up over there. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I thought it was a one way. I'm like. Well, if you don't know, don't be so emphatic about it. Tell me, like, I'm not sure where we're going yet. All right, I would have waited in the garage. Yeah. Now, look, look, Deej, you do know, right? It's a long way for me to have to travel to represent you in traffic court. So can we just, come on, stick to the rules, oh, buddy. buddy. All right, it's buddy, a long way mistake, for me to have to come. The mistakes I'm making is not going to be court. I'm dead. I, I shot myself <laughs> for, on Sunday. I broke my thumb. Oh, Sh what did you do? I shot myself <laughs> with the nail gun. <laughs> uh, see, you've been showing off with that thing. <laughs> That'll yeah. teach you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's so funny. I texted right after. Right after I, I have a first aid kit. I got glue, all the the medical grade glue and everything. So I just like I get to the truck. I get I get it all. Like I cleaned it all up and everything. And um, I get it glued up. And when we talk about what I bought, it's that's part of the story too. But I get it all glued up. And I took some pictures, pictures of it and sent it to Joe, Greg, and my brother-in-law, Robbie. And I'm like, I'm like, well, the house is Kristen. <laughs> I've christened. I go, I shot myself with a nail gun right through the, right through the top of my thumb. It's like, Psh. I was like, mm, all right. That was Ouch. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But was it some it's sort not of the trick? first time. Was it some sort of quick draw competition with someone else? Is that what happened? It just, you know, went a bit too fast. No, it's just, <laughs> you just you're moving you're doing a good you're moving at a good clip and i just held the board the right way but when i'm I'm hanging i'm like trying to come in the other way on the board that i'm shooting through mm -hmm. and where my hand i i just misjudged and then shot through instead of going into the board it just went right into my thumb and you're just like ah and it it i mean it bled great i mean it was squirting it was awesome <laughs> right out the end of my thumb i'm like oh boy yeah so, oh man um oh dear right yeah, so you sort of your first picture for the cinema room is you know your new theater is you know written in blood abandoned hope all yeah, you enter it here like, <laughs> it's funny so oh, uh, glue it up back to work mm. so well that's what that's what super glue was invented for wasn't it was it the korean war i think it was, it was yeah it was, in, it was invented to to for, as a as a to help with battlefield injuries yeah you just just chuckle that on there and it'll seal it and that's it you know keep yeah. moving on <laughs> the only one that bothers me not doesn't bother me i just i i find it fascinating it's like i've glued 
practically everything on me in all the cuts. We have it on the bench in hockey. We do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the one that's always fascinated me is the uh, barefoot water skiers. Mm -hmm. That when the bottom of their feet get cut, and they're doing like 70 miles an hour or something across the water and they just glue mm. their heels and they'll show the cuts on the on the and you're like it only holds for a little bit and then you've got to have the water just hitting hitting that cut and i'm just like this stuff's great but it i mean i mean i this is from when i glued it and it's perfect mm. it's fine yeah. it's just it's awesome so <laughs> saves the trip, trip uh, yeah. to the emergency room yeah, well, so. that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, shall I say what hi to you? Yeah, what do we got going on here? Numbers Ooh. are jumping already. So um, uh, we've got Steve at who was first in the chat today. At least looking at oh, the... Oh, Steve uh, was the first looking... one to make it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a <laughs> then, then slacker Mikey Shram. I don't know if you've heard of him, Deej. Yeah. Um, he was... Uh, he was a new uh, guy, yeah, right? A new guy. After. Yeah. 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 I mean, new guy. You know, Welcome, well, Apparently, Mikey. he was just... Uh, according to you and Joe, he was just some uh, some stranger's house that you were just driving to. Um, it's, I, the, well that's what it's like it's just so weird it's like yeah we'll talk more about that i'm sure <laughs> um so hi to van gool uh van gool talking about fallout maybe we'll talk about that later maybe. um and then well all right we will <laughs> you've talked me into it um dom's in hiya dom um we've got um scruffy's in hi scruffy um we have got um obviously jack lee we've already put up so we know jack's in Paul Hertz uh, saying hi. Jordan's there. Ariel uh, Alliance is there. Uh, Horizon Home Theater. Yeah, that's New? Don. He was in the chat. That's Don. He's um he's got his own channel, YouTube channel. It's great. Oh, cool. So like a home oh, okay. theater hangout right. situation. This is really oh, good. Nice. I've been in. I've been in. I don't know if I talked to them in the chat, but I've watched this show. No, hmm. I haven't joined them live. I've watched his videos. Um, okay, that's right. Nice. I haven't joined them live, but yeah, it's okay. pretty cool. Pretty cool. And stuff. then Carl's in, um, Mr. Emails in himself. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a fair few in, so it's, uh, it's all good. Um, so yeah, plenty of people in rocking. And again, as we always say, I think we should get your first show or you're just tuning in. You just thought, well, who are these people? Um, then feel free to say hi and, uh, we'll, uh, say hi back. Um, you know, yeah. if we, if we feel like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, yeah. If you feel like it, or you can be shy, and uh, <laughs> apparently, lots of people are. Um, There's more uh, more injuries going on. Um, uh, so, almost, so Horizon says, "I almost killed myself today. Dropped a full sheet of five eighths off of off the drywall the, uh, lift today." On you? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So or just dropped the it off the lift. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. don't know. Um, yeah. yeah, that sounds yeah. fairly nasty. You know, try and behead yourself. Not good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> a pain a, in the neck. St Steve at DIY doctoring too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, it's a broad church. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you got to keep going. You don't have time to go get somebody, get a professional. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. Well, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> no. So yeah, so everyone, let's rock it in the chat. So uh, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. And we yeah. will do our best to keep you amused. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and informed well, about, right. you know, first aid. The various goings on. <laughs> That's Paul, yeah. Good old Paul. I knew, Paul, you would, you'd get that. Yeah, it's a DIY episode of The Omen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to put some of these in order here. But... Mm -hmm. do, do, do. So, well, but, yeah, no, it's a really entertaining episode of, uh, of um, uh, Takeover Tuesday this week. Yeah, uh, it, it was good. So I managed to listen to most of it, not quite all, but most of it. Enough, by the way, to have tried hugely today to make up some time to see Overlord again, because I don't normally need an excuse ah. to see that film. I love that movie, and I was going to watch it again in tribute to the three of you, but yeah. I just could not. We have no how much we tried. watched. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was I was trying to do it because I thought, oh, I yeah. love that movie. And I thought, yeah. it's an hour and 50, I can do this. And I just could not do it. And I didn't want to cheat and, you know, watch the opening 10 minutes and then say I'd seen it all because that wouldn't yeah, yeah. feel right. So I I will do it. I've got some time tomorrow. I'm going to watch it then. I think that movie's great. Although how you'd fall asleep in it, I do not know, guys. Because I've just never fallen stop. asleep. But, I oh, <laughs> you were saying like that night, I, oh, my God. Yeah. How oh, I yeah, would... yeah. It doesn't stop. That's yeah. Fail. <laughs> Joe, we got back to the hotel that night and we get into bed and Joe opens his phone like to get on Instagram or something or check something. Mm. And he's like, I wasn't like I went to swipe the first picture and I started snoring. And he was like, holy crap. Like I was mm. out like that. 
just passed out. <laughs> I was like, oh, but <laughs> I mean, all worth it. Like I said, yeah. Well, so. quite well. I, I, I mean, Mikey's saying he loves Overlord. I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's absolutely awesome that film. In a, in a fairer, more just world, there have been about thirty of those. You know, they, they, that's yeah. a genre that could just run and run. You could have all kinds of different fun with the, you know, the the zombie Nazi genre, mm. and and you know, and especially being told in that way. I love that movie, directed by a guy called Julius Avery, who I don't think has done anything since. Um, or at least not that I've seen, and yet yeah. I, I think that film's great. Have you? Did you say you had seen it? Did you have? We no, haven't? I haven't oh, seen. Man, it. I, I did. Are you like, sure? I I'm thought positive. you had. No, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey. We may have talked about it, and I probably said, "Yeah, I saw the beginning of it" or something like that. Mm. Um, but Mike had suggested it during a show like a while ago, maybe over a year mm. ago, clearly. Um, and I was like, all right. So I bought it and he's like, you got to see that opening scene. So I mm. did. And I meant to get back to it. And then obviously I never did. did. Yeah. And then, you know, mm. and it's funny, John did the same thing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just hadn't seen it yet. So. It's more, it's more up John's alley than yours. Cause you're not a big zombie guy, are you? Um, no. Although this isn't really a zombie movie in the traditional sense. Yeah. It's schlocky, you know, zombie Nazis and just with, you know, soldiers trying to survive. And it, yeah. and it gets into all kinds of gory territory. It's great. And it is a hell of a home theater experience. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I wish I'd had a chance to see it again today. I, w I am going to do it first thing in the morning. You know, the viewing oh, pile geez. can wait. Uh, I'm going to watch it again. I've seen it, it about five, nice. six times. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, what? before we get going, it's like, uh, did you see this one this morning? On, uh, I saw it on Twitter this morning. Our man, uh, what's his name? Steve? Is it Steve Brock? How do you say something? <laughs> Is that John, John Brock? Yeah, John Brock. In yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? I was. I would, I would not have recognized him. I've seen. Him. We've we've had him live on the show. Oh yeah, yeah I would yeah. not have recognized there, him. There he is in what do you say Malaysia? I think he said. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. If I remember mm -hmm. right. And, oh no, I'm sorry, Okinawa. I'm sorry. He oh. he's there vacationing and he's scouting. He's uh, taking in some of the um, uh, the location shots from karate mm. kid so okay. <laughs> but he tweeted out with him and he's like repping you know merch and in okinawa i'm like i i showed this to my wife i'm like this is so cool like this is what you know our listeners do they're like like okay we're going on vacation going to you know going overseas going to okinawa and you're like oh yeah i gotta bring my bright side t-shirt with me so i can show it up <laughs> like, <why? laughs> i was like thank you that was awesome you know oh, i would um, not have recognized him he looks yeah. completely different. Wow. Oh, no, that's him. He looks just like him. <laughs> he looks just no. like him. <laughs> he looks just like him. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I would not have recognized him. And yet, yep. you know, we, we've spoken. Um, there he is. But Okinawa, Aikido fans, is the um, is the birthplace of Aikido. The Hombu, where it was first developed, is in Okinawa. Um, oh, okay. So I do want to go at some point because I'd quite like to go and have just do one session in uh, in the actual dojo itself where it was invented albeit they would kill me in about five seconds but it would be fun yeah. if it was going to give it a go <laughs> that's funny um Ooh. yeah yeah so he's just he's there just hanging mm. on no on no, vacation nice. Um, we like those, don't we? So we, so anyone, I mean, we've got truly international listeners, you know, anyone that d has got a bright side shirt that wants to take a photo of you in a far flung location. We want to see yeah. those, don't we? We like them. So I think, you know, if anyone else is going to be, uh, you know, uh, going somewhere far flung, then get your photos in. Cause we want to see those. Yeah. <laughs> I was far flung to Schaumburg, Illinois. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. just outside the lovely Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Are we ready for the big announcement? Go on, do it, Deej. Do it, do it, do it. All right. Now, before I announce it, I want to ask you, Steve. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I told you earlier, but you didn't for a time being. You didn't know no. what the announcement was. Mm -hmm. Am I overstating it? Truthfully. No. no. No? No, no, no. I know your the way you phrased it was very clever. Yes. A foundational, yeah. uh, you know, purchase. I, yeah, it, it it is. It's one of those essential, um, yes, uh, things. It's not a popcorn machine, has Travis. Have. If you're in the chat, <laughs> <laughs> not butter. Um, <laughs> although, although those Twitter things. Did you look through that that article of all the different popcorn machines? 
yeah. that, uh, that have come out. Oh, yeah. there were some very cool ones in there. But yeah, no, you're not overstating it, DJ. That yeah, I I I get okay. it, and it's um it's cool. So are we going to put them out of their misery? Yes. <laughs> So going back to the uh, the thumb situation, um, in the back of my truck, uh, stopping the bleeding, my phone happens to be sitting on the floor of the back of my truck, and it lights up, and it's Greg, my, my son-in-law, and he's like, look, look what I found, and he sends me this picture, and I'll show you that this is the picture he sent me, uh, Facebook Marketplace, this local cinema, cinema, uh, cinema, cinerama, I think it was called, uh, literally going out of business. So um, and it looked more into the story, and it sounds just like John's situation, sadly. Mm. Um, and I said, I immediately, right after I got the, the blood stopped, I, I could use two thumbs, I texted my wife, and I said, can you get on Facebook? She's on Facebook. I'm not. Mm. Um, and can you find out about this? And they're like, yep. And last day, they, they, they're demoing the building today. So I, they're like, I had to go in by last night. Now, this was Sunday afternoon. So uh, Joe and I, Joe, uh, Greg, and myself, Greg grabbed a dump truck from work. Um, we had to go down there. There, These are the images. This is late last night. We got to the house at like 8.30, uh, 8 o'clock, right before. And now I was supposed to be getting on with Mike John. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I'll be there at 6. Okay, maybe 7. Okay, guys, probably 8 at 8 o'clock. I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so this is them. Like, we had to take them out the door here. But this is the ones we chose. They're all taken apart on the floor here. Um, here it is lit up. Joe put some lights on it. And then last night in the dark, this is what they looked like up in the attic. We got them up there. Um this is what they looked like. These were the seats. We grabbed these 10 right here, but we had to, I couldn't wait to tell you this part, Steve. <clears throat> we had to unbolt them from the floor. Now, what's the stereotypical home, uh, theater floor like, Steve? Sticky and horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get down on your hands and knees, boys. We got oh. some bolts to pull. Mm -hmm. And it was funny. Joe and Greg were like, whoa. This is gross. Like the floor was sticky, right? And it was gross. Mm -hmm. Then you start moving these chairs. Now here they are. I took this picture, cleaned them up a little bit. And look at this beautiful picture. Don't they look so mm -hmm. nice? They yeah, do. Like, I'll, they look I'll, mm. Don't they? They look oh, gorgeous. Premium is what I would say. Mm. Yeah. You open them up. Mm -hmm. There's popcorn in them. There's candy stuck in them. There's like jujubes. There's and. I, 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 um, this is for John. I've been saving this joke. Uh, as I showed you earlier, it's like you walk into the theater, you can take any ones you want. And I'm like, okay. And you go to where most people don't sit, right? The ones that aren't usually mm. filled a lot. So they get less usage. That's usually way in the back corner. But what does really? go on up there? Yeah, I think yeah. down the front row, no. right at the front, surely. I am not putting a black light on these things. <laughs> I'm going to clean them first. <laughs> Was it? Uh, yep, uh, Steve at in the chat right away. Get a, ga a gallon? <laughs> it's going to be more than that. Um, yeah, so, but it, it was, the floor was, oh, it was brutal. Um, yeah, and it, but I'm, that's. I, it doesn't bother me. Like once you're dirty and you're working, you do it, you just go and do mm. it. Right. And it's like, but it, it, it was, it was pretty funny. I was thinking to you the whole time. Cause I'm like, I'm getting, this isn't secondhand seats. This is like hundredth hand seats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't like secondhand stuff. Right. Oh no, man. I could. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so well, just before we started, I, I was saying, you know, when, when I was designing cinema George, cause it's quite a small room, it's only a single skin garage as we've talked about lots of times. And I was trying to think of the maximum amount of seating I could get in there. And I did look at, cinema seats you can buy them brand yeah. new those ones yeah oh yeah um but so they are quite a good space saving idea for those that, that have got not a lot of room but you do sacrifice something in the comfort um but yeah they were brand new i, I can't you as you know yeah i can't buy anything i know, I know. <laughs> all right so here's the explanation no these are not my forever seats Okay, these are not my forever seats. But what I love about this, and Greg was like uh, right along the same lines. So 
uh, I I went in there to buy 12. Now, 12 aren't going into my theater. My theater is going to have a row of four and a row of four, just like when we get the real seats, right? But then four of them, I wanted four for the podcast studio, which is also a mini screening room. Okay, so those will stay in there permanently. Um, they, on Facebook, they were saying 50 bucks a seat, come down, take what you want. So cash only, of course. So I get there because it's the last day. They're like 30 bucks a seat and take a few more because they're all going to go yes. anyway. So yes. take a few more yes. as, yeah, spares in case a seat rips if somebody sits mm -hmm. one with a pen. And I'm like, perfect. So I grab 15. So I got 15 of these things. And um, they'll be fine once I clean them all up and everything like that. But what this enables me to do, and like John and I were talking today, is... I have my, I have seats. I have decent seats. You know, they're not my forever home. They're not, they're not as nice as the seats I have here, but I don't need to spend time, energy, and money on seats right now. I can put it into things that are more important to, to focus on. Like, I think for me, the last piece I need that I need to buy and I don't want to, I can't skimp on is the screen because mm -hmm. To me, think about it. It's like I have, I have, I can take my Marantz and all and my SVS Ultras from here and get me going, right? So I got all mm -hmm. that just like the plan was. I can do that, so I'm good. I need a projector. I need a screen. Screen technology doesn't change a lot. So if I put, if I invest wisely now, I'm done. I don't want to, I, Hey, John, how we doing, buddy? Yeah. I was just about to say, <laughs> um, and, but I don't want to like, even if I was to just go and get like a cheap and it, I know it sounds funny, but a cheap $500 screen that's wasted. Cause I'm never getting mm. rid of that. And how do you sell a five, a cheap screen? That's like, Hey, anybody want a 150 inch cheap screen? And, and what am I going to get for? It's kind of a waste. So you better mm. serve to do it right the first time. So I'll do that. Even a projector, I don't mind. Like technology of projectors could change in a year. So I, I, I'm not necessarily the projector is never really a forever piece anyways, because technology changes and you're probably going to upgrade it eventually. Not so much on the screen. Hey, Nelson, Nelson just popped in too. Um, <laughs> so this here enabled, it just, it literally locks me in. It's like the only question mark I have to having my theater up and running is that screen. And that may mm. take some time because I do want two-way masking and I want like 145, 150 inches. So I may be saving for that. And and then, like I said, on the, uh, on the Takeover Tuesday, it's the SVS Pinnacles are what I want as my forever speakers. But because I have the Ultras, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not in a hurry. I can save up and get them when I can get them. So, um, but this was, this was a big, a big foundational piece for me that kind of solidifies that I will be in my theater sooner rather than later. So I was pretty excited about that. So what do you think? Yeah, no, they are, they are cool. They do look like premium seats. I was thinking kind of, if yeah. you, you know, when you go to a theater and they're like, do you want standard or premium or VIP or whatever, yeah. you know, they call it, these are like the ones you'd expect to get for premium. You know, you mm -hmm. turned up and you paid that extra few bucks or pounds for that. You'd be like, okay, yep, here they are. So yeah. they're worth doing. But uh, yeah, I, I feel your pain about the cinema flooring and, and the state yeah. of the seats. Cause having worked as a cinema usher for just over a year while I was doing my law degree, um, we saw just about, buddy, everything you could imagine <laughs> yeah. on the floors and on the seats. And, you know, so it, all, I, all I hoped each is that they're very wipe, wipe clean or very wipe free. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, like, yeah, it'll look like a Jackson Pollock painting under a, uh, under a yeah, thing to borrow, uh, exactly. to borrow a line from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but, yeah, Nelson they, look, said... but they do look cool. He's like, you can get three great ones for the front and keep those in the back of the theater. Um, the funny thing is that Nelson, you know, this it's my prime seating position is the back. It's the mm -hmm. middle row 
So that kind of wouldn't work. It's like I could put these in the front and then put the primes, like the real nice one. And I, that would enable me to do that. I could just get that row for myself. And then these could stay in the front row until I could round out and finish the room. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. that, it, but even just that thinking, like Nelson's saying, it, this enables me to adapt to a lot more situations and focus some energy where it really does need to be focused and for me anybody that's shot for home theater seating it's really really hard and it's and especially if you're particular about what you're looking for and i have yet to find and john and i were saying this today i go i have yet to find a single home theater seat in any price range i'm looking in ranges i can't even afford just to see if the seat exists and it doesn't so what I'm saying is, is like, I want a, a lower back because I want that audiophile feel, right? I want to mm -hmm. be able to have my channels come in from behind me. These ones accomplish that, the ones I have here. That's why I chose them. I don't want, I, but I do want a headrest so that if I do lay back, I want to be able to tip it up. Okay. None of them, I want uh, microfiber. I don't want leather. I try to get everything in there and it's like, I can get this, I can get that. And it's like, you can, and everybody can write me and say it in the chat and be like, you'll pick a feature, but you can't get all of them. So mm. this kind of enables me to, what if I got to have them custom made? That's going to cost more money. It's going to cost more time, but I'm not in a hurry. So, and exactly, Paul, I thought of that too. I think of it all, oh, that's Garinder, car seats. <laughs> And I said this to John today. I'm like, why don't they make a home theater seat that has a higher headrest? But why does the headrest have to come out to here, out past your shoulders? Have it come up like a car seat headrest so that the sound can get to your ears. Nobody's doing that. So that's why I'm like, I'm, and John's like, now you got to find somebody that'll build them. I go, I know. And that's part of the work. And when I can mm -hmm. focus on that, I will. But this in it, this here enables me to be like, I'm not going to choose just some seat because I can, or I need it. And it's like, I'll live with these. And, and like you said before the show, I'm like, I don't recline when I watch movies. I don't do it. So I'll be fine in these for like, I'd be fine in these for a few years <laughs> and be like, ha ha, I'm sitting in my theater, you know? Mm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're not, they're, like you say, they're not just, um, they, they're, they're utilitarian for you, but they're also, you know, yeah. people watching this, listening to it and thinking, well, I, you know, I need something that's cost effective and that will fit into space that you know, they are a, 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 re a serious option for those that want to have it. Yeah. You know, for longer, for, 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 for their forever seats, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, they are an option. And, and as Gorinda says there in the chat, you know, they will give you the authentic theater look. I mean, yeah. you know, there's no question. I mean, they're, they're actually made for theaters. So they do serve a number of, a they number got of cup purposes. holders, the armrests come up and they like, yeah. they do, they do slink back a little bit like that, like a normal, like, you know, those seats are like the seat comes down and you sit back and you watch a movie. So, mm -hmm you know uh, do they have lighting do they have no who cares i'm there for the experience of what's on the screen and that let's put our focus into that and then we'll round out the comfy stuff as i get older <laughs> well you could if you wanted to to you know make it you can put a light strip along the bottom and, and oh yeah you get to the bottom of them you could do that very easily and of course mm -hmm. if, if they're only sort of temporary anyway then you can mess around with that you could yeah. put individual light strips at the bottom of every one of those you could have different colors on every single seat if yep. you wanted to i it could put my own garish, little usb can... charger in the armrest i can why well, I, yeah. I can do all that stuff yeah, there's, you, there's yeah. a lot of things That'd be you funny, could do huh? with that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, you could play when with I got it the and... when i got a little time to kill wait till you see what happens <laughs> <laughs> make yourself some little so, trays to go in the cup holders for mugs because that's yep. the problem with those cup holders if you've got a hot drink yeah. and a mug you, you they're, they're no good for that that's why i've got little little trays that slot into the uh, cup holders in my my theater well, seating. unless of course steve you have you have the yeti cup that has the well, bottom made perfectly to go into the theater seats that's yes. you know another no, you know thing. yeah reason to buy <laughs> exactly but yeah so, we've got because i've got mugs here you know like normal mm -hmm, coffee tea yeah. cups and, and i you know i quite often will go in with a cup of tea at late at night and watch a film but that would be no good with the cup holders in the armrests of the, the, the my theater seating but the right. little trays are so cool 
because you can put them on there and you can put popcorn and everything else on there as well. But you could make trays for those. That would not be difficult, especially with your yeah. expertise. Um, <laughs> but I, but I like the thought of it remaining as a in in the sort of as a viewing room. In Where the are you, Scruffy? Where yeah, are you, yeah. buddy? Mm. Um, yeah, I, my wife actually doesn't like that idea. So Scruffy in the chat says, "DJ, have the bright side logo embossed on the fiber, uh, like if you get, when I get microfiber on the headrests." And um, mm. I think Valencia does it. There's a bunch of them that'll do it mm. for you. And I was like, I had that idea. My wife's like, I don't like that. She goes, you do what you want, but I don't like it because she goes, now it's all of a sudden like that's now we're getting obnoxious. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, hello. Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about it with, with, with mine, but there's no one over here that I could mm -hmm. find that would do it with leather seats. Um, they're just, I, cause I wanted it stick. I want the cinema George logo stitched into it. You right. know, the, the proper stuff because they're leather and i mean you know i'd spent yeah. five grand on each one so i thought yeah. well look i might as well have that but i could not find someone that could mm. do it how i'd you want get, it done but see what so. i like is i like pillows you do pillows mm, yeah so you do your seats the way they are and i i, I intend to do like an all black or something mm. um and then you throw you put the pillow there and then that accents it but now you get that clean look of like my wife was saying so that's that's probably the way i'm going with it um yeah. But yes, I have thought, I even thought of doing like you know, the sports teams across all four rows, like Bruins, Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics. And she's like, it's a movie theater. I'm like, I know, but I'm just thinking of ideas, spitballing. <laughs> I'm like, I, these are just the ones that come out of my mouth, hun. Relax. <laughs> you can hear the other stuff going on in there. Um, there are, Paul said, why home theater seat? He said in an earlier statement, why do they have to be so wide? And they said, maybe there are narrow seats out there and I haven't noticed. Uh, yes, there, each company has like one version and it's like, and that's what I'm kind of looking at so I can get four across. That's another thing, get them narrow. Like most seats at around uh, four across are um, about 130 plus inches for the normal seats. So you're getting about 130 inches, but they are there are some narrow seats and they're, they're just as nice, um, but they're meant for, you know, you're not expecting this big giant room for you to sit in, which I don't understand either because they're so big. But um, the narrow ones, you get in under 120 inches. I think I saw one that was like one 112 or something like that. And they were really nice, luxurious seats, but they are meant to be narrower for people that don't mind that, that aren't looking for that big roomy thing. Um, so that is an option. But again, like I said earlier, try to get all the options that you want. Oh, you want narrow? That doesn't come in microfiber. Oh, you want a headrest? No, that doesn't come. No. Oh, you want lumbar support, which I, I want lumbar support badly because that's, I have it in my theater now, but it's just me strapping a pillow in there because I'm, you know, get your back right. Um, so I want to make sure I get all these things, but um, yeah, obviously no lumbar support in these things, but, um, mm. but I'll get by. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've seen the uh, Barcelona. Um, they, yeah, they're, but they're still, they're high back 47 inches. I, I believe the Barcelona's where. So in there, 47 inches and you're like, forget it. I'm like, these ones here that I have are 42 and they come up to here and I'm six feet tall. So they come up to right about here when I sit upright in the room. If I slink down like that and like rest when I'm not like critical viewing, my ears are blocked a little bit, but 47 inches, forget about it. It's like you're, you're blocking the whole back of the room. And to me, it's like, that's just not worth it. Um, so anyways. Oh, all right. You want to take that down? That's a, that's, mm. that's enough. Sit. Let's, let's sit down on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so uh, it, presumably Deej, if you do keep them in the podcast studio stroke viewing room, then does that yeah, yeah. mean that at some point we'll do a live podcast and have a very select audience of like four people? <laughs> like a golden I ticket in a Wonka what you bar. Were saying. That would be great. Like yeah. it's like our live <laughs> tape before a live studio audience. Yeah. It's four people. One guy's got like a kazoo, another one. <laughs> <laughs> so that is great. We gotta have and then I'll have Joe there with the applause sign. <laughs> yeah, the Terminator hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at this. This just in. 
Oh man, that would be that's funny. No, it's meant like I gotta come up with a way that I can still bolt them down, but move them so that it's like you can be in a viewing room and screen like watch a movie. But I also do want a podcast table in there so we could sit around it and you know record shows in there as well. So uh, I got some creative thinking on that. And Greg, Greg was like right away. He's already got some ideas for it. Like that was in his original text to me. He's like, you could do this in the podcast studio and you can put them in your theater until you get, I was like, bam. And, and now I'm talking to my wife going, uh, I gotta get the, uh, what was it? Um, I gotta, uh, I go, I gotta get on Facebook, this Facebook marketplace thing. This new thing seems pretty cool. <laughs> She's like, oh no. Yeah, um, said, I've heard about this thing called eBay. I don't know what I'm, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, Don, Don's just, saying yeah. that the Barcelona's a 33 in height. Um, are those the ones that it, they are meant for that? And they're really low. They're like, they're 33 in height and they're so low. Those, I, I, those are not comfortable. I've been in those and my wife was in those and we we're like, uh-uh. and um, uh, one seating also has a version like that. I didn't like those ones. And they have the, and then the back comes up. That, that was, I didn't like those. Those weren't comfortable to me. So, um, yes, but yes. And that's what I mean. It's like, so you either want like for, for audio file stuff, like the Barcelona's right. They're way too low, but then everything else is just way too high. Why can't we get a comfort? Like I bought these t over 20 years ago. Why can't we get something in that 40 inch range, 42 inch range that would be normal? but still have all the features of these really expensive 47 inch ones. And for, you know, it's like, it's just weird. It's so it's and for a market that is asking for it, I think, you know, mm. and or maybe they aren't, maybe people are just like, Oh, I guess this is what I got to get. Well, I'm going to be asking for it because mm. I don't, I don't want to sacrifice what I got. There's bound to be, there is bound to be someone out there that will make them bespoke for you. I mean, you'll pay for them. But yeah. there's bound to be someone who can make them in a bespoke, you yeah. know, what, what size do you want? Okay. What yeah. color do you want? Okay. What material? You know, you'll pay through the nose for them. It'll and be I'll a probably lot of money, just, but it'll yeah, be cool. And, and I'll do the custom. If I have to pay and get them designed, I'll do that for my row. And then mm -hmm. the front row, I'll get something that looks really close to it, but isn't it right? It'll just, mm -hmm. because I do, all, I do want them all to match, but Oh, it's yeah. like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, <clears throat> um, but yeah, so it's, it, it, you know, it, it, and I've been, I've been shopping for over a year. I've been looking every time I go on. And so like all the, like Steve Atts got the 44 inch audio advice revolution. That's still two inches higher than where I'm at now at 42. And that's coming here. So you're just coming up and I've seen all of these. And I, 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 I will say maybe these are the ones, there are a few out there that are very close but that height thing isn't just the issue. It's get height, suede, or microfiber. Either one is fine to me. Um, I just don't want leather. I just don't want the reflectiveness of leather. Um, yeah, suede, microfiber, narrow, and you know headrest lumbar support. And try to get all that together. Forget about it. I, I'm probably like, it's probably like me trying to get like, you know, a Ferrari at the price of a, you know, Toyota Camry, but <laughs> it's like, maybe I'm just being ridiculous, but we'll find out. Yeah, keep All searching right. for that unicorn. Exactly. It's not a leather unicorn. <laughs> yeah. But I've actually um, like, like, I've actually thought of building them myself. <laughs> like, I started looking into doing that and I'm like, I took my seats apart looked at how they're made and i'm like all right so i just gotta get somebody to make this but i could build the seat i could do this <laughs> it's like when you don't get what you want that's what i do <laughs> like, i'll do it myself damn it oh yeah uh, um brock stars just just uh you know john Hola from japan um john mate you know it's not hola that's spanish it should be konnichiwa surely <laughs> there he is it's like you can see his lips move now yeah, 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 yeah. There he but is on he's... the screen. <laughs> John, do not be walking around speaking Spanish in Japan. You're going to confuse them. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that's mm. awesome. That's How you doing, John? That was an awesome tweet mm. this morning. We talked about it earlier. 
Um, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, representing in Okinawa. Mm. That was awesome. Um, all right. Give our regards to Saito if you see him. Mm. <laughs> what do you want to do first, Steve? I'll take you in the order that I posted them, if you like, because there's no, oh. that we don't have a, a theme. Well, oh, making actually, me look that up. Kind of theme. I, I, yeah, you got two um, here, and then we'll two wrap of them up with the final one. Yeah. yeah so you want to go linked, with the but... original, then yeah. the. All right. Yep. Here we Let's do that. Go. All right. Let me put that in order there. Boom. That good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Here we go. Okay, now you're not going to know from that picture, anybody watching this, unless oh, you know the yes. film, you're you going to think this film, film yeah. is called Dutch English, which is a weird name for a film, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is because this is another one of these damn discs where you get a st the only still menu is on language selection. And then mm. as soon as you hit, you choose it, you then get a full motion video uh, right. menu which is a great although i did post a pic of that but it's not as good as this um okay so hopefully those in the know will know this yeah. is ronin, ronin the 1998 again i would say instant classic uh with robert de niro sean bean um you know you name it everybody john reno um everyone and anyone it's an all-star cast this movie mm. um which had a recent release in 4k over here so it's 4K, UHD, DTS HD, Master Audio 5.1, uh, mixed to Neural X. And I finally got around to watching it. It was released here in a steel book. Um, and I, but I think it's been out there for a number of months on, is it like Kino Lorber or Shout or something like that? Um, and okay. I was very good because normally I would have imported it straight away because I really like this movie. Um, but I was, I was a good boy. <laughs> I was patient which is not something normally associated with me. And I just waited for thinking there'll be a release eventually. And there is, and there was, and this is it. Now, did you seen this? I'm assuming. Oh yeah. 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 Right, good, I want to say yeah. I have the laser disc too. <laughs> really? Oh, what, even yeah. 98. Would you still have been collecting laser discs as late as 98? Absolutely. I was, I had laser oh, discs wow. right up until I moved here in 01. I still was right. I was okay. still running a laser disc player in 01. 01 into okay. 02. Um, yeah, it was very hotly contested on which was better, DVD or Laserdisc. And um, mm. in 98, definitely you were still doing both. If you, if, okay. especially if you have like 200 discs and you just like, you're not just going right to DVD. Um, yeah, true, so, true, true, true. Okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, and it was one of those relatively early DVDs as well, because of course it only really launched in mm -hmm. summer of 98, didn't it, more or less? Um, so this came out in September, October 98, I think it was. And then, you know, it came out then on DVD. So yeah, now I have always really liked this film. And funny enough, talking about the seats and me working in the cinema, in 98 into 99 was what I got. I got back from America in September of 98, went to China 10 days later for a couple of weeks and then came back. And then I started working in the cinema just before Christmas of 98 until about Christmas of 99. So this was one of those movies that was, that was on and showing at that time. So I've seen it hundreds of times or at least bits of it while we were doing screen checks. And so I've seen it many, many, many times um, and lots of times since. So I love this film. I think it's a really really good movie really well done john frankenheimer directing it of course and and directing the hell out of the car chases and everything else and all that sort of stuff so very very cool um and the movie still holds up it's still very entertaining it's great so how does it sound in terms of how does it look in terms of its 4k um presentation so the video is interesting in that the movie itself the cut the well i'm sorry colors of, yeah you're right the, the yeah, colors have been like you've never said that before what's it that in what way interesting like, yeah well it is yeah it's it's what's interesting about it is because it's got quite a very specific look it's been desaturated deliberately it's mm -hmm. trying to evoke the movies of the 70s that's what yeah. it's trying to do i mean it, it, you know it's no you know doubt about that and so it what and why i say it's interesting is because initially when it begins i was actually quite disappointed with how it looked and i was thinking hmm. oh okay it's all a bit it's a bit soft and it's a bit bland and it's not really but then i quickly sort of realized actually this is a different kind of 4k 
because this is not 4K HDR trying to give you that retina searing HDR, you know, wider color gamut. This is a, a movie that's trying to use HDR in a different kind of way. Um, and so it took me a little while to kind of get my head around that. And as you do, you then start to see the detail. You see the, the you, you can kind of get where it's going. It's not demo material video wise. Um, you know, there are some gray bits instead of blacks. So there are some some issues, but I think it's a good representation of the movie that Frankenheimer was making. You know, it, it looks how I'm sure he wanted it to look, but yeah. it's not jaw dropping. You're not going to put this disc in to show off 4K to anyone coming around. All right, not like you would Overlord and all of Mikey Schramm's list of movies. Um, you're not going to be adding this one, Mikey. All right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you won't be adding this, I don't think. Um, so, so the video was is okay. It's but it's not jaw dropping. It's just it's all right. But so I would then, also say, isn't it? Um, a, see, here's the thing: not everything has to be Overlord. Not everything has no. to look like Super Mario Brothers, right? Or mm -hmm. Thor: Love and Thunder with that kind of vibrancy. And that's what I think HDR is really good at doing: is you take a movie like this, and it's like it gets the treatment. It here we go, and mm -hmm. like this is what the direct this is the palette the director intended mm -hmm. right and when you get it you're like why can't we make it like this and be like that's not what they wanted mm -hmm. just like cameron's movies why can't they do it this way because that's how he did he chose to do it that way um this is a lot like heat which was 95 i believe something mm -hmm. like was before this so. yeah. right mm -hmm. so yeah. But Heat was the same way when it came out in 4K and everybody's like, well, it's not exactly the same. You watch Heat and it gets, it, you get, it's like a little muted, a little bit compared to other 4K releases. Um, and the Batman, look at the color pa palette of the Batman. There's a modern movie that has 4K HDR embedded in the color palette that, that, that's chosen there. So it's, it, it's not a bad thing. And sometimes mm. you can actually use this to, sh I think too many people are too quick to say it's a poor version when it's, no, mm. that's the director's version. And mm -hmm. it's a good example of this is true HDR. This is where they're really nailing you with the co dynamic contrast. And in this one, they tone it back a little to set the tone of the movie. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that's, and we which, can see the difference in these things now. Cause we have, yeah. Well which calibrated is, which systems. Say, it's a, it, 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 it it does evoke what the director's going for. It's supposed to be 70s, you know, mm -hmm. that, that kind of nihilistic French connection, obviously Frank and I'm, yep. a, you know, he, 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 there's trying to desaturate it to evoke a mood. It's a modern set San film. Francisco. Yeah, quite. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's evoking a mood. It's evoking a time, even mm -hmm. though in 98, it was a contemporary movie. So as I said, I, but it's not the stuff of 4k demo material. I don't think. Right. Um, now, where where I I do have more of an issue, because I think it looks at how Frank and I wanted it to look. Where I do have an issue with this, unfortunately, is the sound. And I, and I did not think I would say this. Now, on the DVD of this, um, I used to, and the Blu-ray, actually, I used to use that, uh, the chase car chase sequences, particularly the one towards the, the end of the film. I used to use that as a demo sequence to people that would come and see the old cinema room. Um, and I was really looking forward to this. And I thought, oh, yeah, okay. You know, I know it's only DTS HD, but 5.1, but it'll be all right. Well, up my it. it'll be okay. And I was really looking forward to it. And unfortunately... It, it is just a bit, eh, it's a little bit underwhelming, I'm afraid. Um, it does not have the punch and the, the envelopment, I don't think, of the older discs. Um, now, it may be recency bias. We've talked about this before, you know, where, you know, you watch June and you watch Lucy and you watch, you know, Aliens and you know, Atmos sure. and all that. And then you chuck this in, which, you, and, and you know, it, it suffers by comparison. Yeah. And I'm prepared to believe that that's possible. I am prepared to believe that it's recency bias and that, you know, it's been overtaken so much recently that then going back, it, it suffers, as I say, in, in that comparison. Um, and that may well be it, but it's a shame because I was really looking forward to how this was going to sound. And I, and it's just not as good as it was, or at least as I remember it. And I know it well, as I say, this is like, be like you with, with episode four, not the Phantom Menace, obviously, um, Mikey again. Um, 
<laughs> this will be guy. like you with with, with <laughs> yeah i've got the blu-ray <laughs> um but uh you know it would be like you listening to episode four and listening to a mix from you know a, a dvd an old lossy dvd yeah you know I, it, you know it so well you know the differences and with this movie you know love it or hate it i do know the difference and unfortunately yeah. for me it just did not i was expecting it was going to blow my socks off i was going to say blow my hair back but you know that's obviously not going to happen um so it uh it was all very kind of pedestrian i'm sorry to say you know there is some envelopment i mean it's not a complete bust by any means there are a couple of times where where de niro lets fly with this big machine gun that he's got it does sound quite beefy they when they go into the tunnels of paris um which of course was very controversial when this came out because it was less than a year after what happened to princess diana um but and it was in that tunnel that they shot this um that that um the uh, there is some envelopment. So when you go in, you do get the echoes in the in the thing, and that is enveloping, and it does creep into the overheads, and you know you can tell it's in a in a in an enclosed environment with all the rest of it, but not enough. And you know when the cars hit one another, there's no thump, there's no boom to it. It's all a bit lacking, um, and and I was disappointed with that. So overall, I think it's it is it is the way to see the film. I think I'm not saying stick with your Blu-ray, stick with the DVD by any means. I mean because the the you know the 4K does have an impact. It's just not your modern action movie. It's not your modern action soundtrack. Um, and so I think right. if you go in with expectations tempered, you're going to enjoy it. I mean, it's staying in the collection. I'm not about to get rid of it, but it's yeah. just not what I was hoping for. And we've had a string of amazing releases in the last few weeks. And I think that this is just kind of, uh, you know, just not wowed me as much as I wanted. But you know, I'd still recommend you get the disc if you like the movie, because yeah. of all the ones, it's it's the one to have. But but there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's and 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 that's the thing. It's like just like you just said. It's like sometimes movies like this suffer by comparison because mm. we we've been spoiled lately with a lot of the new releases, um, and you know, or not even new releases. Like like think of like Sunshine. That's not even a four K. Mm but just the, yeah. the production quality and the cinematography and we were blown away by it. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and you're like, how, how, the, but then you go to something like this and it's a, it's a completely different animal. And yeah, it's, it is disappointing when something like you say, like the soundtrack isn't as dynamic where from mm -hmm. your description, it sounds like it's not necessary. It, it just doesn't feel like it was a director's choice to like, subdue the bases and subdue, you know mm. su you know tone down the dynamicism i don't know if that's a word <laughs> dynamics um, dynamics dynamism yeah, dynamism yeah, dynamism you, have... <laughs> dynamism. Oh, you say tomato i'll say tomato uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so but yeah, yeah it's it's that's too bad but it is a mm. great movie though yeah. Now, now, as I was watching this, so Deej, what, as I was th watching the car chases, I was thinking, one, has Deej seen this? Because I thought, well, you know, the, you're as a car guy, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna love this. Yeah. And then the other thing, though, that that I that I was thinking of is, which I've never asked you, have you ever seen the short movie Rendezvous? It's a French film. Not that mm -hmm. you know it. I've heard never of seen it. that. Uh, car guys, we talk about it. I've never seen it. I've oh never man! Seen it, but I've I heard about. A, I've heard about. We've talked about it in garages. Um, mm. Car guys will talk about it. That bullet, obviously, that's you yeah. know, this was talked about a lot with bullet. Um, mm. when this came out, if you remember, they were like, Oh, it's like mm. you know, and that that was a big deal. Um, yeah, but well, it's, if you can track down, there is a DVD copy around of Rendezvous because I used to have it. I mean, I sold my DVDs years ago, but I have got it, and it is well worth seeing. If, if you know anyone that's wondering what I'm talking about, there's a short film, um, which was released in I think it was the 70s, late 70s, where someone decided for reasons I've never quite got to the bottom of to basically take a car um, I think it's a Ferrari I think it was with a camera strapped to the bonnet or the, the hood of this car and Front. essentially to drive <laughs> from central France all in one shot mm -hmm. central Paris sorry central France all in one shot from central Paris all the way out to meet someone you discover mm -hmm. and famously the, the the driver the person driving is unknown and there's talk of it being a formula one driver and all the usual Didn't, stuff wasn't that yeah. like the the um the genesis or the inspiration for um what's his name on top gear what did they call him stick the stick 
the Stig. The Stig. The Stig. Yeah, the Stig. Yeah, the Stig. Yeah, the Stig. Yeah. And that was the same idea, wasn't it? It's like, mm. wasn't that? Because that's what I'm saying. We've talked about. I know I haven't seen it, but I know like I've mm. talked about it in in car circles, and it was like because that they did find it, tell you finally one year they told you who the Stig was at the end. And, well, um, that but that they did. It was a it was a one of the stunt drivers from James Bond, Ben. Ben something or other. He yeah. was a stunt driver in the, the Bond movies. He wasn't a race car driver because they famously joked about it being um, Michael Schumacher, but it, it, it isn't and it yes. wasn't, but he, yes. he, he, they joked yeah. about it. Um, but yeah, so so and, the, and in this movie, it's a one shot where this, this car just drives all the way out and they drive it, you know, up, they go on pavements, they drive through red lights, they do handbrake turns down around the Champs-Élysées. They are going, you know, they drive, there are people jumping out of the way um, they're running over pigeons left, right, and center. It's a you know, it's a it's a hell for leather drive at hundred mile an hour through the streets of Paris, just oh. ignoring the road rules. And it is a it's an amazing well, at 100, short you film. Gotta. <laughs> well, especially through Paris. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're up on the pavement. I mean, you can, you know, he mounts the curb a number of times and just just drives on down, and people are getting out of the way and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but that's what this reminded me of. And as I was watching this, I thought, I wonder if DJ's seen Rendezvous, because <laughs> I was sort of thinking about that. Oh. But unfortunately, like I said, I got rid of my D- my DVD a long time ago, which is a shame because it would have been fun on the big screen, you know, in the yeah. cinema room. Now it would have been even more yeah. cool. In fact, you know what? I might try and track that down. I'm sure I can find a DVD copy of it somewhere. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's really good. And anyone listening to this, if you haven't seen it and if you can find it, it's well worth a watch, especially if you're a, a car, car nerd and you want to see just what could happen when someone goes – I wonder if, <laughs> yep. yeah. and then just they go for it. And of course, we never know who the driver is because he could be arrested. Um, <laughs> but Very it's much. it's well worth it. So yeah, that's what this reminded me of. Anyway, as I was rewatching it again, um, and uh, yeah, it, it is a good movie. It's worth buying. Um, it's Sean Bean is a little bit underserved in it. I always feel a bit sorry for Sean Bean in this. Um, he's under, but, he uh, dies in everything. He's under. Yeah, everything. He doesn't die in this. He does at no, least I live don't. in this. Yeah. But he, I feel sorry for him in this because uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I've never been quite sure whether he's. And again, we'll be wary of spoilers. But he, he, I don't know whether he he is genuinely someone with a military background who is just struggling with his mental health, or whether he's just a complete charlatan. And and I, I just. I just don't know. And I do feel sorry for him because he looks so dejected at the end. <laughs> when we last see him, it's like, oh, mate. <laughs> yeah. oh, don't worry. You'll be, uh, you know, you'll soon be on the set of Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, not but, for long, uh, but you'll be there. Uh, well, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> well, yeah. Sorry. We'll get letters, Deej. <laughs> yeah, we'll get letters. Okay. Oh. So, Wait yeah. Anyway, that take over Tuesday when I comment on those letters again. <laughs> um, so, all right. Do you want to go right to the uh, to your next? Yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, by all means. And there you oh, go. that's the that's the second picture, Deej. That's the second picture of Ronin. See, there's Sean oh, Bean. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's right. the next one on yeah. from that. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that's not it. That's not it. Yeah, that's, oh, that, that's not it. What are we looking at? This one. It's a. It's it's the one next to the. There it is. You got it. Oh yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Actually, let me see. There's already been some discussion about this in the chat. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let me give you a, an update, uh, a house update. Yeah, quick. go for it. Um, here is uh, our upstairs HVAC. Ooh, it's yeah. huge. <laughs> it, it looks like a jet engine. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's like we, I got I got theater seats going in on one end of that. It looks like I'm building a damn plane. The HVAC guy's like, are you going to start serving peanuts? I'm like, no. But yeah. this... Start serving peanuts and not announcing departures? Yeah, exactly. Well, I hope my house doesn't take off. <laughs> um, I got bigger issues. This yeah. from this picture from one side to the other is, a, oh, is over 16 feet. Yeah, it's the width that's of how, the house, isn't it? That's No, the well, that's the width of my attic. The oh, house is yeah. 35. 30, 30, 35 wide, 35, 35, 35 wide. Yeah. I think 35, 35. Yeah. Like, now you I'm sound fine. like Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gotta, gotta be 35. Gotta be 35. 30, 35, 35, 30. Yeah. 36, 35. Yeah. It's 35. I, I got so many numbers in my head. It's so stupid. I need a nap. I, I need a nap. And, uh, variable, sp- Carl, variable speed furnace Briggs. You betcha. Um, oh, 
so yeah it's uh it's got all like this is um because of the water that i wanted i want to have enough hot water for the four adults so the system we're running for hot this is a um uh what do they call it a uh, hydro whatever it is whatever it doesn't use like you don't pump it like oil gas electricity well it does get electricity but it um it runs like you hot coils so it's actually good for thermic hydro, hydro something hydro, like that but it's electric it's basically hydro, yeah, hydroponic hydro, hydro coils or whatever so okay. it's, you basically pump in hot water through it to heat the air and then that sends it out so it's not dry air so you mm -hmm. you get a better you get more humidity in your house in the winter time when it's really dry um it's super it's like a 98 99 percent efficiency because it's not really it's not burning anything you're just pumping hot water to it through what you're doing in the house anyways and now in i can run my house my side and my parents side on this system and we'll have a, a basically a smaller version of this downstairs in the basement doing the entire basement um but yeah so like from here you look like this this tube right here is like it's 18 i didn't put a tape measure on it yet it's like 18 24 inches big it's huge it's like mm. that and there's one going down each side of the house um in the crawl area or like this so that like one side is the intake and the other side is the out you know where it pumps it out to you your heat and mm. ac so well i know why you've done it so big Deej. i know why you've made those tubes so big it's so at christmas time you can get a white vest on and crawl through it and say come on out to the coast we'll have a few laughs yes i know <laughs> actually i uh do we have we might actually have some duct work that big like the square <laughs> like we actually might have a couple of those for the longer the bigger rooms and the longer run so um yeah it's it, it was pretty impressive i was like holy cow and um <laughs> i was like paul Paul in the chat, you beat me to it again, Steve. Yeah. Because like, I'm going to type it, Paul. I could just I, say this stuff as it comes to my head. Yeah. Or you can read Paul's and then say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Paul said it too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, and so here's another thing. Um, I don't have an image for it. Um, I asked about getting the theater um, its own zone, right? So mm -hmm. like in the basement, like this has two zones, my parents' side and our side, but the theater, it's basic. I mean, it's pretty, it's airtight. So if the thermostat is outside in the entertainment area and it gets warm or cool in there, or you're in the theater and it gets warm with a bunch of people, but the thermostat's outside, it's not going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put a zone in there. And so they priced it out for me, 3,200 bucks to upgrade to get a second zone in the theater because now you have to do intakes outtakes have baffles and stuff so that they can which i'm getting in the upstairs um but then i looked it up online and uh i told i told my installer i, I told the guy this morning i was like here tell your customers about this and it's called you might i found it on amazon this is what i did was doing this was one of the pleasurable things i did saturday morning i was shopping for answers to this stuff and I put everything in my cart for the for the downstairs. So it's called the Flare Smart Vent. Okay, so you you do these vents, and they have them for all sides. And the, you know, they, you replace the vent in your ceiling or in your floor with these smart vents, and they're Wi-Fi connected. You can either hardline them, or you can uh, have a battery in it. And they said the batteries last up to two years, which is fine, perfect. Um, and then each room you get a puck. And it's uh, basically a thermostat. And um, so with this, it's 119 bucks for the puck. And a vent is about anywhere from a hunt, depending on the size, 100 to 130 per, per vent. And what happens is, is, say I'm in the theater and I want to turn up the, the AC, but I don't want the rest of the basement to get it. The entire system, all the pucks, all the vents, close and open accordingly so that when the ac kicks on it it blows the cold air into the room that you want not wasting any energy or time trying to cool the other room that has a that where the thermostat is 
So it actually makes your whole entire system more efficient. And mm. 1500 bucks. It was 14 and 1400 bucks and change. And every room in the basement, the bathroom, the theater, the entertainment area, and the gym will all have its own zone. I was like, done. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't buy it yet. But... I, I, you, you've got to say that's, uh, that's cheap as puck. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I watched you squirm. I'm like, what joke does he have? <laughs> um, yes, Anthony in the chat saying, uh, the Nest will let you just put a temp sensor where you want it, and then you can move it where you want the temp to be based on. Uh, yeah, but you're still based on, like, you're chasing that thing around. So, like, just and that's for the, like, oh, you're not happy with your um, thermostat being out there and yes that was another option that i could do in the theater like i could the other thing is when i'm in the theater i could do what i do here and just get on my phone on the nest app and just be like turn on the ac but then that's going to ac the entire basement for 1500 bucks your system is that much more efficient and you're you're cooling and warming the the appropriate places Right. And mm. it's, I thought that was a pretty cool little thing. And I'm, I'm going to try it in the basement if it works and it, and it's good. I'll, I'll probably do my other floor, my main floor, you know, mm. and then when think about it, you get up in the morning, you got to take a shower. You want your bathroom to be warm, but I'm laying in bed. Jen's in the shower. Just watch naked. <laughs> well, we kind of do that too. Um, <laughs> not on those seats. Not no, nope, not those ones. You're gonna have to wait for the microfiber for that. <laughs> um, but you could heat up your bathroom for cheap. Mm. It's a small room. Close all the vents on the floor and just be like pump some hot air in there so you get in the shower, nice warm bathroom. So mm. cool. The only, the only, the only, I mean, it sounds awesome. The only thing I can think of that that is that is whether you're then sat in your theater and you're watching your movie and, you, and you're already tinkering with your bass levels and your sound levels. And you, as you said, and take over to you creeping up the audio and you, you know, you're doing all that. Mm. And then you suddenly find yourself going, I wonder what the temperature is in the second bathroom on the first floor. No. You're yeah, then yeah. kind of messing around and you, 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 all this time is going on and you're missing the movie because you've just put it up one degree in the gym. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Imagine, but imagine the, how much I'm going to bring to the show. So I watched Star Wars again today at 72 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> There's, it's a balmy 72 degrees outside with a warm front um, coming from the south. <laughs> I think, uh, I am not sure, Bill. Bill asks, how many rooms can you add to that, DJ? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I honestly, I think I do remember seeing something, that, had, but I, I wouldn't reach the limit. Um, especially with four in the basement and even on my next floor, it's like, I have a, a main room, a bedroom, a walk-in closet, a bathroom and a, and, um, well, two bathrooms and then the spare bedroom. So I'd have six, six or seven on the next floor. Um, and it, like most of these things, maybe you just, if I did hit that limit or your house is a little bigger and you have to hit that limit, you can probably just add like a second system to the same, you know, limit or something like that. But. Um, but it just seemed to be a cheaper way to get exactly what I want and actually more efficient too. Mm. So, so, and it, and it's perfect for passive aggressive time for people to leave. Cause you won't oh, have to, yeah. sort of, all you got to do is you've had enough of people either in the winter, just drop it down really cold or yeah. make it really hot in the summer. And then you don't have to tell people to go. They'll just go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pressing the button up 200 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> 200 <laughs> degrees yeah that's, that's a good frying answer. an egg in the theater room you know <laughs> yeah oh man um yeah what the, what is this yeah i don't, I don't know carl's in his own world now it's a pizza <laughs> space with a return <laughs> etc well yeah you gotta have that if you're gonna be pumping air in there i mean <laughs> like, no that, return like, the air does not come yeah, back it's like it's like the room just starts blowing up uh, that's funny um all right you ready to get to your next one mm, yeah let's do this as i said there's been some discussion in the chat already about this interesting people have I'm very interested to hear what you think mm. okay so this then is fallout 
on Amazon Prime. I had to use that picture, Deej. I could not find a portrait <laughs> image anywhere. So that's the only thing I could come up with. And, and as usual, the, the Amazon kind of menus are a bit rubbish. So that was that was as good as I could find. So, yeah, so this is Fallout on Amazon Prime. Um, I have paid the extra cash. Um, so it's in 4K and Dolby Atmos. Um, and something I did check on my receiver, bearing in mind recent issues with, with Amazon. Um, this is the series based on the video games. Have you ever played the game, Steve? Nope. No, nope. me neither. Me neither. And I'm quite a, you know, I still really like I computer games and video games. I've watched it. I think, Joe, was this one, it took place in, what, they have one game that took place in Boston? Is that the one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I I've think Joe played, played it. If it if it if I'm right, it's like everything's just ruined from a nuclear war, and you've got yeah, to run it's it's, and it's set in the distant future, twenty nine two thousand nine hundred and something or something Jeez. like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's way in the future after there has been a, a nuclear Armageddon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I never I'd never played these games, and and I do like you know as I said I it, I should like them, but I've never played. Um, so I've got no connection to the source material. So I'm coming to this, and I did come to this series completely fresh. I've seen four of the eight episodes. I'm not going to pretend I've seen them all. I haven't. So I've seen four. Um, so in terms of a series, it, it it's taken a little while to grow on me. For for quite a while, for the first oh, one, really? two episodes, I was thinking this should be talking to me. It's it's post apocalyptic. There's gore galore. <laughs> there's there's humor it's it's you know there's lots of unusual kind of off the wall characters and 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 other than the beginning which is awesome by the way the opening five minutes or so is really nice and really well done um but other than that then i suddenly found my interest waning a little bit so the first two episodes i was like mm, it's getting a bit like homework everyone's talking about it Do i feel i have to carry on with it but episodes three and four were better and i'm getting into the swing of it now and 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 certainly episode four in particular i really enjoyed so i will finish it um so yeah so it's an okay series again coming from someone with no connection to the source material i'm not a you know i'm not not never played these games as i said so you know i can't talk about the easter eggs i can't talk about the any changes because i don't know um so there we go so so yeah but it is interesting and i will complete it um now, what is interesting, though, Deej, and, and more from a home theatre perspective, is it looks and sounds really nice um, for Amazon. <laughs> Always got to put that qualification in when it comes to Amazon. Um, it does look and sound really nice. And the aforementioned opening, the, the first five minutes, has got some eye reactive HDR. Um, it's set pre-nuclear holocaust. Um and it and it's got some iReactive HDR, some really decent bass in it, and and as the thing goes on, there are some really good bits. There is a there is a sort of a, a suit of armor in this where the person and it walks around, and when they walk around, you've got a rumble in the bass as they go. A bit like in Halo, you know, when Master Chief walked around. Yep. We talked about that, didn't we? It's a bit like that, although it's a bit more than that. You know, it's, it's more bassy than that. Um, yeah, there, there are some decent things. We get some gun battles in it, which sound pretty good. There's some, you know, nice squelchy, squishy gore effects, which sound pretty good. And the CG and, and the, the kind of post-apocalyptic landscapes look really good. You know, the rays are sharp. You can see every little grain of sand, even in kind of medium shots. Um, so as an Amazon series for home theater enthusiasts, like what we are, it's it's good for that. So even if you're not really into the story, and for the first couple of episodes I wasn't, there's enough in there to keep you interested just with the home theater side of it until the story really kicked in, which it has for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this. I don't think it's amazing. I don't, as a series, I don't think it's it's genre-defining. Okay. Um, you can tell it's Jonathan Nolan, that, that, and there was some talk about that in the chat earlier. I think you can tell it's Jonathan Nolan, who, of course, was involved in Westworld. And I think there are some similarities there in terms of how the story is unfolding. It's a very different genre, but the way the story is is unfolding, I think there are similarities there in terms of well, what, you know, you don't have the backstories to all the characters, you don't know what's going on for quite a bit of it. Um, but it's really good, and yeah. But it's still well worth seeing. And when you when it's all up and running, Deej, and when you've um, steam cleaned the seats, then it's worth sitting down and, <laughs> and giving it a watch. Um, so yeah, and yeah, Van Gogh, I get that. I think that's very clear. 
the, 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 there's a lot you're missing if you haven't played the games. But I don't think you have to have done it. I don't think it's one of those where you're okay. not going to get the story if you don't know the games. Because, I, you know, I figured it out. Um, but, yes, I, I, I get that it'll be better if you it's have not played rocket it. rocket science. <laughs> no, well, quite indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's okay though. I am, right. I am enjoying it now, and I, I'll definitely finish it off. Um, okay. And so yeah, and I, I think you'll, you'll enjoy it, Deej. I'd be curious to know if John's seen it actually, because again, this is right up John's alley. So I don't know whether he would have seen it. Post-apocalyptic. Oh yeah, he loves that stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, he, and he likes kind of, he, he you know, he likes yeah. the genre stuff and that you know all the things in here that mm. I do and you do. Um, so I'd be curious, and he and he's one to sit down and binge watch a series, isn't he? Yes. So I'd be curious yes. to see if he has seen it. So if you're so, still in the chat, John, let us know. Yeah, I had a, I had a really good chat with him today. Uh, we talked for quite a while, and uh, he actually no, I don't think he has seen it. Um, if he's in the chat, he could, not yet, but it's oh. on the list. Yeah, there but you go. he's yeah. super busy too. And mm. the two of us have been trying to get together just to talk on the phone. And I texted him, like, I'm working today. And I'm like, I got my earpiece in. I'm like, oh, wait, let me. And I've been doing this, like, like, all right, we'll talk tomorrow. We'll do this, right? And it just takes, I look, and the last time I spoke to him through text, I, I mean, we, we still have our group thing going, but our text yeah, yeah, yeah. was Easter. And I oh, laughed. Man. I was like, oh, my God, that was like weeks ago, <laughs> right? And I, yeah, I sent yeah, them a picture of Easter. I had an uh, Italian beer at my brother-in-law's. Um, but, yeah, he's super busy, too. And he's mm. like, I haven't watched anything. And he's, I was mm. like, me either. I do my show in the morning, and it's like I, I, I joined you for one of them this week. Uh, and I am making time. I'll talk about that later uh, on Thursday. But, um but yeah, it's like I mean he's super busy, but things are going well. Mm. Um, he was saying um, he's yeah. He's well, he and I we we've texted yeah. more recently than that. Um, you know because we we talk football. Well, and... yeah, we talked today. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so we, we've been in touch. Yeah, he's he's doing well. Everybody, he's uh, he's not as well as he would like, but that's John and that's me. You know, like he could always do better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, but uh, but he's on on pace. Uh, things are going well. Um, so, um, we'll talk. Hopefully, maybe he'll be dropping by sometime in the in the in the near to distant future. So, um, but that'll be fun. Hmm. Whew, so yeah, he hasn't seen it. Uh, let's see. Is, is that it for that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. So worth seeing. I, I think I think yeah. most people like it more than me, but I still really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and I think Jordan said. In the chat, yeah, it's a faithful adaptation of the games. Love the opening sequence. Yeah. The opening sequence is very, very good. So even if DJ, you've only got 20 minutes, it'll be worth you just seeing the opening. And I think that might kind of Shawshank you a little bit because I think you'll be like, oh, okay. You know, it's got a really nice, very evocative opening five, 10 minutes um, at a children's birthday party. <laughs> um, so that's that's worth seeing just for that. Um, yeah, actually, Jordan makes another point there. Wish it had released the episodes weekly. I yeah, John. Do you know what? I agree with that, and I agree with that because I also think it would give you time to think about the episode as well. Because I think there are themes in it that are easy to miss when you're racing through them. So yeah, I, I agree. I think that probably would have been a good idea. But there we go. It's Amazon. Um, so there we go. <laughs> right, nice. go on, indeed. I, that, that's a good photo. I like that. You like that one? <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll just talk a little briefly. Uh, I got some mm. pictures here from Expona. Well, maybe we'll go through those. But I mean, it's getting getting late. We got stuff to do. But um, but yeah. Uh, so we started our day. We had our plan. Um, first thing, priorities. We wanted to uh, make sure that we got there nice and early. And uh, I'll, I'll pull up the poster here for him. Uh, so uh, SVS is in was in room uh what's that one four four fourteen forty two so we're like we'll get up to fourteen forty two stake our claim get there nice and early so we're first in line and you know and then start our day from there and work our way down so we got there nice and early and as you can see here yes we were let's see pan out here first in line <laughs> <laughs> so they got up that's where that's where we met and uh we had we got nice and early we we're the first ones in so all set that's uh john there on the left me in the middle and mike Schramm. so and <laughs> joe i gotta give credit my trusty cameraman 
Uh, but yeah, so we took tons of pictures. I'll just jump through a bunch of these. We took those ones. Boom. Here we go. Um, that's John looking in a room. Uh, there's one coming up of, look at, look at the look on Mike's face. Would this guy ever <laughs> shut up? <laughs> <laughs> but there's even a better one. Wait, to, there it is. Me. I don't know if I'm showing off karate moves. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Joe sends me these. Um, but yeah, this was just flip through really quick. There's like a hundred and something pictures, but oh, that's, that's where, are the, up. where are the, did you get the pinnacle pictures? Did you get some pictures of those? Uh, talking about those that's the pinnacles you were saying right they're there. like the size of a fridge so that's the pinnacles yeah. right there oh okay josh uh, i mean josh nick is roughly my size mm -hmm. you saw the interview where we're mm -hmm. standing next to each other right yeah. that's it right there right next to him okay. look at the size of that thing and it's it, yeah. it's and it not only is it that tall but it's just beefy it's mm. thick so yeah that's that's the pinnacle room right there um so you can see nice. that, yeah you know, and how much are they a pair or is it individual they five thousand each five thousand a, a pair a pair twenty five hundred oh. each oh, okay each. so and you can see now that's larry right there and these are the titans on the side these are the titans mm -hmm. here now as i said yesterday when i first walked in uh i saw this was thursday morning i came up to see they were still unpacking and they had the titans out and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, is that them? And Nick's like, all Nick said was, yep. And then he goes, come in here. And we go in the little door that's to the left of me right in this picture. And I look, and you go in that room. And for, you're like, he goes, he just points. I go, I see him. I'm like, they are. <laughs> you're like, because the, these titans are big. So you would just, mm. I'm like, okay, that must be them. Um, so, oh, yeah, and this is the scene. This is that, what, the story I told about uh, uh, Shallow so yeah that's the star is born isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so they're they're talking oh yeah the spider-man scene that sounded awesome uh talking with gary oh these those are, those are the tree are, speakers the tree yeah speakers. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so weird oh they're quite uh yeah they, they're, they're quirky unique. in a, quite a fun way yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly how, how much are they each <laughs> we don't know we don't know i i they okay. i with it maybe those were, they might have been like 29 grand something like that or 19 grand or something um, wow some of them had the they had the um price and on like a little sheet on the side some places oh there we go field 29 there you go field coil loudspeakers twenty nine thousand. wowzers and that's for two <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah starting at 20 no that's each oh <laughs> So we I mean, talked about it, that afterwards, and I was like, we were like, well, do you think that's each or a pair? I go, nope, that's each. Because if it's a pair, they'll tell you that's a pair. Yeah. Because they want you to know that it's not 29 each. But when it just says 29, no, that's, you're, you're <laughs> that's 29 each. What have they gone and done? Kill the Dawn Redwood to let them <laughs> make the speakers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, there's some cool rooms uh yeah. going in some although everything looks a little bit anemic after you've seen the pinnacles <laughs> yeah uh well not everything and it's <laughs> uh zach when we met zach there we are mm -hmm. all of us took me a while to realize who it was when you put up that picture of it because I've, I've seen the videos you know and obviously brock yeah. had his installed by dream media didn't he and yes. it took me a while i was thinking i know that guy from somewhere where do i know him from yeah, yeah, and then yeah. i realized who it was um so yeah it was nice to know he's a he's a good guy in real life as well that's good yeah. to know yeah yeah he's yeah <laughs> ariel <laughs> ariel says do you at least get free shipping <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> no 995 <laughs> yeah i don't think they have the same policy as svs try them in your home return them for free <laughs> like okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least i suppose you could carve into the, the wood you know steve and whoever forever <laughs> yeah omar was here Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um these are the Perlissons. These are one of the yeah. Perlison, the Perlison Towers. These are the ones that we were like, oh. Mm -hmm. And I we even talked about afterwards, if you look at these. So when you get into that whole idea of the towers, the SVS towers having the curve. So the mm -hmm. idea is the front of the cone on your tweeter is where the sound comes from, but the depth of your woofer is where the that sound comes from right so the mm -hmm. bass comes from the back of the of the dip and the the highs on the 
you know, on the co- come from the front. So the idea is if you curve it and now everything, if you look at from the side, all of those depths are in line, including mm-hmm. how like on the SVS, like I'd have to have the picture of it. But if you look at these perlicens, it's the same thing. The cabinet's mm-hmm. not curved, but what they do is if you look in here on this picture, and I mean, this is a grainy shot of it, but the depths of these woofers up above and this cone, this cone is recessed into. So when you were to look at the side, it looks like they're all in line perfectly uh, on the front, but it's actually that that um, tweeter is pushed inside. Now, mm-hmm. one of the nice things about the SVS is is they do have a nice wide sound field. And I'm wondering if it's where, and I we talked about this after, I think we talked about it at lunch, in that this might narrow the sound field, which maybe some people want, right? But it opens the sound field up, especially for home theater, so you can, you can hit most of the room because your tweeter isn't set back inside of something like this. Now, I'm not, I'm not critiquing the Perlistons, I'm just told, show, pointing the two, you know, factors that they you know design choices that they made and one of the things that they were saying one of the things larry was saying about the design it allows for that nice wide dis- or he was saying we have a nice wide dispersion so you get good coverage anywhere in the room you're getting a good sound stage and mm. i just thought it was interesting looking at these perlistens and seeing oh yeah look at it. if you look closely they did exact same thing they just did a different you know design choice mm. to get to the same destination yeah, so, no, they, they do look uh, cool. Oh, there's um, a clearer Paul, picture. Paul is saying, uh, anyone getting Cylon vibes off those amplifiers? <laughs> yeah, it's big time. Um, let's see. Oh, those are, there's the Elax. No subs, and they were like, awesome. <laughs> like, mm. We talked about that. These, um, Joe had never seen these before. These are the Martin Logans, and mm. those that... I, I told a story, but I experienced these back in the 90s. They were awesome. Mm. Um, let's see. What's, yep. Okay. That I don't know what we were doing in that room. <laughs> uh, let's see. We keep going. That's the 24-inch. The 24-inch sub that you can, you know, DIYers. There it is in the, in the box. Wow. Uh, this is that video I was talking about. Now, look. So there's your 24-inch sub. This is what we're demonstrating. Look at that. What are those doing? That's their sound treatments. <laughs> it's like one inch thick egg crate foam. And then watch, you go all the way to the back. Sound diffuser for bass. Mm. <laughs> the- <laughs> Where are you sending that? Mm. Uh, uh, that's see, uh, no, I'd see knowing my, my luck, I'd be the one who had the hotel room right underneath. <laughs> where yeah. they the 24 inch subs actually that 24 <laughs> inch sub was the hotel room right about right above shoe and they were going okay. back and forth with each other so neither of them really cared because they were both mm. doing it to each other they were right <laughs> um they told us that in the um in the 24 inch room whatever that company was mm. they were telling us they're like yeah the people downstairs are really rocking it and we go down there and it was it was shoe um mm. so yeah there's a giles in, in the Stark Ever Solo room, lots of pictures. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this is uh, HSU. This is the HSU room. That's their speakers. It's an unusual oh, yeah. and, center. That's an unusual center speaker, isn't it? With one, uh, yeah, one the, driver in it. Yeah, they're all identical. It's you just turn it on its side. It's that. That's the same oh, okay. speaker as that. You just turn it on its side. Um, but this is what How Mike that was saying. Sound? Yeah, they were okay. They were nice. Mm. They were good. They weren't. I wasn't like, oh wow. No, they were nice though. They had a good separation around the room and stuff. But I mean, mm. it was kind of like muffled by the overbearing bass. But this is what mm. this is the one here that uh, Mike was saying. Like they had the cheap, thin mm. um, foam on the wall, Fruity. and this one kept falling yeah. down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, HSU Expona. Yep. Oh, Macintosh. Got to get that obligatory picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, these speakers are crazy. And those aren't even the tallest ones yet, I don't think. Um, this one's really cool. Look at the carbon fiber in these. Carbon things. fiber, yeah, 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 yeah. Joe likes that one where you can't see me, but you see my reflection in it, looking at it. <laughs> um, oh, 
Sonopan. This is that demo that I said about the sound treatment. Mm -hmm. This is it. This was that box that you open and close. It's like pro acoustic, uh, pro so acoustic. Um, but this is that Sonopan that, and that's the picture of like the green boards and stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. I still haven't called him yet. And here's the horns. Now see what I was saying about like, you look yeah. at it from head on and they just look like these big ports. That's what mm. they do. And those are taller than me. They're huge, like ridiculously yeah. tall. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't get that. That would annoy me. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't just, I just, it's not my aesthetic. Uh, yeah. Choice. Here we are. John's. Oh, and then we're back to the kind of the beginning. So yeah, that mm. was, that was a quick little uh, tour. Mm. So yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Hurt just mentioned in the chat saying, um, you know, we have a big hotel based hi fi show in Bristol. It's kind of the same, more a look than a listen experience. Uh, yeah. Paul, I was at that last year, and that's where I met John Thompson for the first time. Um, I live just outside of Bristol. So, oh, okay. uh, yes, I was at that, the What Hi Fi show. Yeah, that's where we met for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, let me, let me uh, pull this up too. This is, uh, this is the demo that we talked about. Um, I don't know who sent it to us. It was, Mike or Steve actually found it. This was Angela Angelina Jordan. Um, you can find Bohemian Rhapsody, Angelina Jordan. I played it in my theater today. This was the demo that they used that Nick used for the um for the uh pinnacles. Mm -hmm. And I I put it on in my room. I have ultra bookshelves. I went to pure mode, which gives me that stereo, you know, just stereo sound and my room sounded really good, but I didn't hear the things that I heard when I was in Chicago, when I heard them through the pinnacles, there wasn't, there was this one particular, I was looking for it. I listened to it a couple of times and I had it, I had to back off of reference because this, you know, this isn't a movie. So I backed down to like a minus six DB and I didn't hear the, like, like I said, like you can hear her like mouth move, like the lip smack and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you could check that out if you want to listen to it in your home. It's uh, Angelina Jordan, Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm just looking it up now. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, okay. Is it so, in, is it in um, Atmos? I don't know. I just wanted to play it in two channel. And, and when I played it in two channel in my room, even with, I'm crossing over, I, but actually when you go to pure mode, it shuts all that stuff off. So I was mm. just running the ultra, my, um, ultras, uh, bookshelves, full range, and they sound, the bass sounded nice. Obviously it's not as deep as what we get when I have the subwoofer and stuff, but, mm. um, but it sounded really good. And yeah. I was actually very surprised at how good it sounded. Um, but but this was yeah it was in it it and like we were saying we heard a lot of original music this weekend so mm. that was pretty cool um yeah it is on itunes it doesn't look like it is in atmos or lossless um so hmm, okay i'll give that a, i'll check that out not on my all ipad right. all right um <laughs> and let's see before we get we only have, you only have one left right yeah, yeah 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 those four episodes of fallout took most of my uh viewing week up DJ. yeah and as i said i couldn't get overlord in much as i tried <laughs> yeah um so let me give you a timestamp. the one that mm -hmm. we fought long and hard we talked about it today um i'll pull it up right now uh it's this timestamp right here mm -hmm. um dark night rises from the dark night dark night no dark night. yeah, yeah the from the dark mm -hmm. night 56 minutes 41 seconds steve's favorite gatling guns and it's oh, yeah. when it's like he takes the bullet remember batman takes the bullet out of the wall and he wants to duplicate that fingerprint and so then the scene progresses to here and now it's bruce wayne and alfred in the bunker and he goes through and he he shoots it what is it like five times and mm -hmm. it's like it is boom boom and it's 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 quick it's so fast to do and I made a script out of it on my Kaleidoscape and I titled it. It's like, uh, you could, you, you, what was it? You could have made it louder, sir. <laughs> like, Cause that, that's what, uh, Michael Caine says right after he's got the headphones. You know, oh, I think you could have made it louder, sir. Um, but it's real. I mean, the bass in there is it's in, in Johnny's room. The bass in there was just like right in your chest. It's like bang, bang. 
But we like worked like a half hour trying to find this. And we were skipping all around it because we're just like jumping back and forth. And um, so it took us a little while to find it, but we were we were glad we did. So um <laughs> so yeah, so that's the dark night at 56 minutes 41 seconds. Hmm. All right. And do yeah. All right. You okay, Steve? You yeah, no, it? I'm okay. Yeah, I just did said I've got a tickle at the back of my throat. I cannot get rid of it. I no matter how much water I have, head swell, everyone watching must be wondering what I'm doing. I've just got this tickle I cannot get rid of. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Uh, did you mm -hmm. try that trick I said? Warm water? Like lukewarm? Yeah, uh, yeah, Not yeah ice I have well, water. fizzy fizzy water normally does it, normally helps. And that's what I've got in here. But oh, it's okay. um yeah, tonight it's not just not shifting it, but that's okay. It's all right. I'm not. It's just a just a tickle. I think it's a yeah. dry dry room. It's we don't have HVAC, so uh, you know we've obviously got quite a dry room. <laughs> oh, there you go. I got a guy. Yeah. yeah it's, well, can, yeah. Does he does he do this side of the pond? <laughs> um, anybody will do anything for a price. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, true. <laughs> it was like you know, which I'm probably gonna find out about my seats, my <laughs> yeah. custom seats. What'd you pay for those? More than yeah, the house. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's mm. get let's get to this. Um, very surprised by this. Mm, okay, I'll tell you why in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this then randomly or seemingly randomly yes. um, is the 20, oh, 2018, 2019? Yeah, I think it's twenty nineteen. Um, reboot, reimagining, recreation of Tomb Raider um, with uh, Alicia Vikander um, on 4K disc and uh, in, and in Dolby Atmos. Yes. Um, although anyone who is going to watch this on disc, this is one of those early Warner's discs that defaults to 5.1 DTS HD master audio. So not only must you go into audio and set Atmos, the other thing it does, which is weird, is if you set Atmos on it and if you stop it and come back to it, It'll keep your place in the movie, and it'll ask if you want to resume, and it goes back to to DTS HDMA again. Ah. So you've got to select it twice. It's really weird. So I nearly made the mistake the second time around, but I thought, well, I better just check, and sure enough, it had defaulted to, to uh, 5.1. So, yeah, make sure, guys, if you're seeing this, if you watch it in more than one sitting, you, you've got to go back and select Atmos again. Um, so the reason that I, I, I watch this twofold, one, um, it, it, obviously with Fallout, it's been a video game adaptation week. Walton Goggins is in Fallout as the ghoul. Oh, okay. And he is the bad guy in this. So we have a link, yeah. not only video game adaptation, but Walton Goggins as well. Um, and the reason I chose this this week is that I recently bought the Lenovo Legion Go, which is a handheld gaming PC. Yep. And one of the many cool games I've tried on it this week is the 2013 reboot of the Tomb Raider game which is yeah. awesome by the way and i'd never played it. it i've never played yeah it's really really good i had a great time with the game and so i thought oh do you know what i own the, the movie of this on 4k and i and i am this person i might be the only person but i'm i am one of the people if not the only one that actually quite likes this film I think this film's all right, yeah. and and I prefer it to the to the Angelina Jolie ones. I think Alicia Vikander is perfectly cast in this. Yes, and you know what I'm like with accents, Deej, and yet I think she's got a really good British accent in this. She's you know actually fairly decent. Doesn't really drop it much. Um, Isn't she British? And, she's not British. No, no, no. She's uh, from oh. Sweden. I want to say I think it's Sweden. Swedish. Yeah, so she has a she has an accent. She's got a Swedish accent. She's she she's a a Nordic. Uh, person in in real life and if you see her in other movies she's got that accent but she so she's got a british accent in this and it's actually really good um so yeah so i watched it i quite like it i've seen it four times i think um first time on my ipad deej <laughs> but since i well, bought the disc and i've seen this for times. another viewing <laughs> exactly that lucy this thing um and so it, uh, it and i i quite like the movie i think she's really yes. good in this and i think she, it's a, and and it's a shame we didn't get more I mean, it was a theatrical bomb, so you, yeah. didn't, you know they're, they're never going to go back to it. But it is a shame because she's really good as Lara Croft. She put a lot of effort into this. She does most of mm. her own stunts, I've since discovered. And it does look like quite an arduous shoot. It looks yeah. like a lot of this stuff. Whether she's just a very, very good actress, 
I don't, you know, I don't know. She is good, but she looks genuinely in pain in some of this. And the cuts and the bruises look too real to be completely accidental. So I think that this was quite an arduous shoot. Um, so it's a good film. Once they get to the actual tomb raiding towards the end, it's very Indiana Jones, but it's yeah. really good. And, it, and it's fun and it's, you know, it zips along. So decent film. Um, video wise is very nice indeed. Yes. This is a polished Warner's disc where, you know, even the kind of flashback scenes are razor sharp, shot digitally and, and so, really, really well done. Yeah, go on. Did, Sorry, you, go on. did you notice on the flashback scenes, we were talking earlier about Ronan mm, and I was thinking about desaturation, thinking, well, desaturation yeah. mm -hmm. and it's funny, like, I was thinking it when we were talking about Ronan, I'm like, oh, we're going to be bringing this up. And here we have a director's choice, clearly. You desaturate it, but how much more is that enhanced? Because mm. the rest of the movie has great, like, examples of HDR. Some of the dark scenes, like her on the dock and stuff. And mm. it's like the the background, the detail in the, the, the black levels are awesome. And it's so yeah, crisp. It's so well done. Um, I bought this a while ago a long time mm. because oh yeah it's it's one of those where i'm like i did i liked this movie um mm. i want to say like the first half hour like the first time i saw it you're like wow this is like a more well more grounded version of this and then it takes yeah. off <laughs> yeah yeah but, then it does go a bit silly towards the end yeah it goes but, a bit last crusade <laughs> you know what i actually thought of at the beginning of this and i looked it up mm. and it's only available in sd on kaleidoscape oh um do you remember? Do you remember the uh, Kevin Bacon vehicle, Quicksilver, the bike uh, movie? No, no, I remember no. Premium Rush. That's the uh, most no. recent one with uh, with uh, Jason Gordon Levitt, wasn't it? That's great, yeah, that film. yeah. This <laughs> one, it's um, uh, Kevin Bacon, and he's a bike messenger in mm. um, New York. Okay, and I, I'm pretty mm. sure, yeah, Quicksilver. It's yeah, Quicksilver. That exactly like Premium Rush. <laughs> yeah, so a broken a broken turn bike messenger clashes with a drug dealer using other messengers to move his product from 1986 mm. and the stunt work in this it the whole movie is bike messengers and everything and the stunt work in this is like awesome i because mm. i was i'm still big into cycling and stuff but yeah. big into going through city going through traffic doing the things that they do in this movie i was i was 16 years old when this came out and I was like, ah, oh. and there, there was a pretty good bike chase mm. scene oh, yeah. in Tomb Raider. And it mm. great dynamic sound during that mm. scene as well. Um, and I'm sure we'll get to more of that in a second. But I did. I looked it up and I was like, if it was in HD, I would have bought it. I'm not buying it in SD. No. Mm. It, but it's and yet just that's not worth HDR it. though on the screen there. I'm sorry. Oh, you mean no, you mean quick silver you're talking was SD. Sorry, forgive yeah, me. SD. Forgive me. Sorry, yeah. It's not even an oh. HD, never mind HDR. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I loved that. Movie you, when I was a have kid. you seen Premium Rush? No. That, no. Now that one you will get a kick out of. That's a that's Joseph Gordon Levitt. That's a new one. Yeah, Michael okay. Shannon is the is a police officer, um, and he's a delivery guy trying to deliver stuff through New York, and it's all done, you know, in camera. So there's very little CG, and and the 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 the, the effect work in that is awesome. I mean, a mad stunt people riding through new york full pelt and there's a thing at the beginning where it talks about we don't have brakes we don't have brakes you don't need yeah, brakes. They don't. You don't, that's they don't. not what we're going to do no. and it and, it, and it's just it, it's very cool you will love that it's yeah. a sony it's a sony disc actually if i remember rightly um not available in 4k but the blu-ray is really nice so it'd be worth seeing if that's on kaleidoscape you'll you'll love that that's a movie all about cycling again sounds exactly <laughs> like quicksilver <laughs> there you go um Premium how much is Rush. that one yeah uh, Premium Rush. I just bought it. Fourteen ninety nine from two thousand and twelve. Okay. Mm. Um, DTS Master Audio five point one U four K UHD, not Ooh. HDR, but four K UHD. Um, wow. So one hour thirty one minutes. I will be very interested to see. It sounds like it's a it's like a modern ver. It's the same thing as Quicksilver. Exactly. It does. But I wonder if you yeah. might have seen it and not remember it. Because no. it's a movie that was pretty big when it came out. It was all over the the, the interwebs. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, um, oh, you may, but it, I wonder if it's one that you've forgotten you've seen. <laughs> I think I'd remember, especially Michael yeah. Shannon, Joseph Gordon Levitt. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, they're both great. I mean, it's really, I, really I could, good. And it, I, 
your description of it sounds like Quicksilver was like le legit. Mm. It wasn't it wasn't CGI. It was like you got yeah. they had stunt riders and stuff like that. And I mean, mm. so it'll be interesting to see like the difference between the two. But um, mm. but back to the to the yeah. bike movie <laughs> at hand, Tomb Raider. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. So so it, uh, I think it looks amazing. You know, it's really nice right from the beginning. Yeah. And again, we talked about desaturated color. That doesn't affect the detail levels, though. Dominic West playing Lara Croft's dad. Um, you know, he you can see all the different marks on his on his cheeks, all the pock marks, all the skin detail and everything else, even in the flashbacks. Um, so, yeah, it's never less than razor sharp. This is, you know, video wise, not far off reference for sheer kind of polished, detailed, colorful video. Um, looks great um and then you get the audio which is dolby atmos and i i think that it comes alive most towards the end where you get them going into the caverns and the tombs and there's all the all the atmospherics and everything else that, that goes around the room but the whole movie's fun i mean the, the the storm sequence that you get as she's on her way to the island and all that stuff looks great reminded me a bit of king kong the 2005 peter jackson version where you have the ship just off you know hitting rocks and everything in a big storm but still really good sounds great um and again you've got some quite good gunshots and stuff in this as well and, and gunfire um yeah, I I was really pleased with this again. I I, I don't think I'd seen the 4K version um, for quite a while. I think it's been a while. So revisiting it was great fun. And then having played the game over the last couple of weeks, it's fun to see all the little Easter eggs and all the different things that that have been put in there directly from the game. And it's quite a bit. So yeah, I, I thought it was great. So recommend this. Um, anyone that hasn't already got it. Or if you think, because I'm sure it's cheap if you want to pick it up now, because um, it's been out a while. I, I, Yeah, I thought it was very, very cool. Um, it, so, yeah, I'm glad I saw it. I thought the, the base in this mm. was borderline reference level. Mm. Mm. It wasn't yeah. Lucy, okay? Yeah. But what I mean by that is it is so tight. The, the score, the drums and what is it it's uh i have a timestamp here for you um mm -hmm. you have to have remembered this um it is at where did it go there we go about 48 minutes and say 20 seconds and mm -hmm. 48 minutes 20 seconds it's a gunshot and it's it's a handgun in the jungle remember mm -hmm. it is loud it is accurate you're like oh my god that was just it was crazy and i was like mm. that it, but throughout this movie the bass note the drums are so tight that's just really nice tight bass throughout this movie that i i just didn't expect that um like i said it's not lucy type bass but there is there is a there's some i think there's some shotgun action there's gun action mm. obviously but really yeah. really good bass throughout that i think made it it, it um accentuated the experience steve well it's a delivery system clearly exactly <laughs> um speaking is, is, of is it all kind of... i was yeah I was go on sorry see speaking of uh accentuating the uh experience uh this guy here the master of accentuating the experience uh giles what's up buddy you paying attention to the road <laughs> he doesn't Heck yeah. <laughs> accentuating the driving experience yeah look at you what are you doing <laughs> okay <laughs> well this isn't <laughs> can you can you drive by a wi-fi or something <laughs> it's like the blair witch driving experience yeah it's a nice day out there though at least <laughs> What are you doing, buddy? God. <laughs> this guy just tried to walk out in front of me. It's crazy. I'm doing well. Yeah. How's, how's everybody else doing? We're doing good. good. We're yeah, doing good. good. You're a busy man. <laughs> Hang on a second. Damn, Have you guys ever taken a tour of uh, Castle Rock? Here we go. Oh, jeez. Where's Pennywise? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like like the worst, I'm the worst. I'm the worst guest. 
<laughs> I think they have better luck talking yeah, to them the on the moon in 69. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm good now. I'm 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 out of the bad spot. I'm losing It's all broken up, buddy. Now. It's all broken up. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, hey, I'll let everybody know. I'll talk to you later, all right? <laughs> You're all broken up. <laughs> Wave it. There oh. we go. Talk okay. to you soon. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, Charles. <laughs> Play it, buddy. Oh, man. No, he's dropping in. Um, Yeah, no rest for the weary. Uh, I'll be on his channel, 930 Eastern Time here, which is 730 Mountain Time later tonight. We're going <laughs> to uh, recap Exponent a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I, he, he's like, Hey, you should come on and we'll talk expo. I'm like, all right. So he sends me the link. I'm like, Hey, pop on and say, hi. And we'll, you can tell everybody about your show. And, and he does it from a car. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, I was, I thought I was going to go to bed early, but nope. Nope. Mm, yeah. Nope. Never mind. Never so, mind. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so we were talking uh, tomb Raider. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, I'll just you know I think it's great. I think it's, this is a good example of one of the earlier Warner's discs that really showed what 4K can do. You know, we talked to, as much as I don't think Ronan is really a demo disc anymore. I think this is um, right from from the off. You know, it looks and sounds amazing. This is yeah. the kind of thing that, that DVD cannot reproduce. Blu-ray can't produce it with this level of sharpness and detail. Um, right. This is one you put on and go, just check that out. And what's nice about it is during the movie, she gets so many cuts and bruises and everything yeah. else that you, that all of that sort of shows up um, really, really well. Um, so, yeah, it, good fun. I, I think that it, it is a shame we didn't get a sequel. Um, and again, Jordan thinks that it was said or says that it was uh, financially successful in the end. I had heard differently, but you know that's fine. Um, oh. And the sequel got cancelled because the film rights changed to a different company, um, which Makes is sense. you know fair enough. Which which yeah, it's, it's a shame when when that happens. But um, but yeah, and I think Alicia Vikander said she you know she enjoyed the role and, and enjoyed the prep work for it, and that she would have come back. But I, I think tomb raider as a as a as a film is now gone back into kind of production hell and will remain there now and she may well have aged out of it um by the time it circles back round, so they'll reboot yeah. it again but yeah. but yeah but this you know as a one and done is well worth seeing i i think um and if you're looking for you know decent home theater material and if you haven't got it then it's worth picking up yeah um, but yeah 48 no, cool. minutes 20 seconds you got a nice bassy gunshot there and then it actually the scene progresses from there and it's like a, a pretty decent chase scene with real dynamic, you know, mm -hmm. bass in the score, bass going up from what's going on. I mean, great surround envelopment. Uh, it, it, the entire movie is like that, but that right there is, I just remember, I was like, whoa, I mean, it woke me up. <laughs> not, not that I was sleeping, but you're, mm. I remember our, I was already engaged and then that happened. So, you know, it's just like, am I, my mm. harmony lit up and you know like wow and it was just so <laughs> quick and so precise mm. it was really good and as and as everything begins to fall apart quite literally it towards the end yeah you know that all sounds fantastic and there's lots of kind of moving of the audio all around the room and, and again the whole yep. ceiling feels like it's caving in um yeah. but yeah it's a it's a really solid mix um yeah. but yeah no, it, it's good it is good and again whatever you think about the story or you know because it is a bit silly it, it still is a worthy home theater experience, if nothing else. But I think right. we both think there is a decent story there as well. Um, so yeah, no, it's good. I, yeah, it's I, you know, it's good bearing fun. in mind the limited time I've had this week to to watch stuff, I'm really glad I revisited this. Yeah, um, same and, here. You know, and it nicely informs the game as well. So that's great. <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I got. Uh, what's? Uh, let's see. I'll go to this one here. Let me. I'm going to take, uh, I got a couple of comments I want to hit on. Um, but yeah, so this, this dropped today on, uh, Kaleidoscape. Mm. Uh, so I know yes. what this is. There you go. Uh, Dune 2, Dune Part 2 dropped today on Kaleidoscape. Um, I don't, ha I haven't had the time to watch it yet, but I am making time Thursday uh, Thursday morning, I'll get up. I, it's going to be raining, so I'm just working at the house so I can take the extra time and, you know, take an extra hour and and just, you know, instead of two hours or whatever, I'll leave it. I'll leave it like eight or nine and uh, head to the house, but be able to get this in. Um, 
I wanted to try to do both. I was going to try and do Dune and go right into part two, but I don't have that kind of time. That's like <laughs> that's, six, a, whole that's a whole day, <laughs> six hours. Mm. But I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I, I obviously I wasn't able to get to it in the theater, and then when I actually had a like I had a little bit of time, but it was out of the premium theaters. It was into just like you know crappy ones. So I was like, oh, I'll just wait to experience it at home and uh, really, really looking forward to it. I uh, heard, obviously, we've heard nothing but great things about it. And mm-hmm. I'll be talking about this for sure next week. So, mm. well, I'll, I'll be really doing Overlord for that. sure. <laughs> and there then uh, maybe I I'm will gotten... too. Maybe for, for Mikey, yeah, yeah, I'll try yeah. to get that in. So, you'll, you'll um, get a kick out of it. You won't fall asleep. I promise you that. All right. The, the, whatever all right. else you might do, you will not fall asleep during that movie. I don't um, know. <laughs> I might I'm going to try and watch Giles' um, show, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try to watch Nightmare Alley this week as well. I've got the disc of that which I imported, which okay. is the Yerman El Toro movie, which I've been meaning to see for a long time. So I'm going to try and get that watched this week as well, so we can talk about that next week. Um, cool. A sort of neo noir gothic horror type thing, which I've not seen other than about the first five minutes, and it looked like my kind of film. So I thought, right, do you know what? I'm going to wait. So uh, I didn't want to see it on Disney Plus, so I'm going to watch that. Oh, and of course, Deej, did you see the news about Godzilla Minus One? No. We are going to get it streamed on Amazon on May 3rd. So Amazon have got exclusive rights to it. What we don't know is whether there'll be a physical release as well at some point. Right. But May 3rd, Amazon are going to be streaming it. Awesome. So, um, yeah. So at least get it in our theaters. Hopefully it may. Mm. I wonder if. It doesn't necessarily coincide with Kaleidoscape, though, with like digital stuff. Usually mm. digital will coincide, but if 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 we do get it on Kaleidoscape, that's even better news that eventually you would get it physically, right? Yeah, so. yeah. I think it's an Amazon exclusive from the way it's yep. been. It's been pushed out today, suggesting it's Amazon only. Right. Um, there's been some wonder whether it would be worldwide, but I can't imagine they wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and, and there's certainly going to be a big box set in, in Japan. So hopefully that will someone that, over there that is coming. Gonna pick I, I've yeah. seen the, I've seen the news on that, and I've seen the pricing and everything. But it's only in Japan; you can't even can't and and it, no so. no English subtitles as well as I understand it. Yeah. So no. uh, so you're not yeah. going to want to touch that version. No. Um, you know, not unless you add in your own things as you're going. I suppose you could just create your own story, um, but it would be a bit weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> um but yeah it's i mean there was oh speaking of news like you said mm. uh listening to todd again this week i mean his, his news av nirvana like his news home theater news of the week uh is awesome he's he's really developed that he's got uh, this day in history and home theater he's got, it's awesome mm, yes so yeah, definitely good. check that out i was listening to it again today and he had it was funny the week before he had talked about dune 2 coming out and we're gonna get it on the 15th right and normally i wouldn't point this stuff out but i love him like a brother so i'm gonna treat him like one and then on today's show (laughs) or yesterday's show he's like i'm not sure if we're getting it tomorrow um but we'll know i'm gonna wake up you know he's saying like i'm not sure if we're getting dune 2 tomorrow i'm like in your show last week, you announced it, and that's why I was so excited. I looked it up, and it was announced on Kaleidoscape. So, you know, <laughs> Todd, listen to your own show, and you'll have your own information. <laughs> it was so funny. But, yeah, that's a, that's an awesome show. Um, but, yeah, I got I got a comment here, and I have to hit on this. Keith, buddy, I am not picking on you at all by any stretch of the imagination because, uh, and Keith says in the chat he's like i'm not falling for diamond tweeters or the curved design marketing jumbo um i thought the same thing and as a matter of fact i've said it multiple times on the show steve you know this uh as soon as these were released that's the first thing i did is i called ara who he's been in this business a long time he's literally building his own speakers he builds beautiful speakers ara from ht guys and i said all right, is this legit or is this like, and I, I don't think I said marketing jump jumbo, but I said, mar- I go, or is this just like marketing, you know, tech for marketing's sake. And he was like, no, it's legit. But we had a great discussion about it. Keith, you're not wrong. It's like diamond tweeters. You got this, that, and the other thing. It's, it's all about those little details. And that's when you get to the finer points, 
is it the end of the world if you don't have the curved design or is it the end of the world if these things aren't perfectly lined up? Because I've also said, I, or, and I said it right to our, I started cracking up. I go, so you want your woofers lined up perfectly with your tweeter in depth perception, but then we're going to go and take one and push it down below the screen. So that's changing. You know what I mean? In home theater, this stuff isn't as important because we're moving speakers all over places. The distance of these things, it's not as important, but I would never say, and of course, Keith, they're going to use it as marketing because of course you would, that's what you're doing, but it's, it's the attention to details that they did here or that anybody does. And I love stuff like that. And that's why I like, when I noticed the, you know, Perlissons, I'm like, wait a minute, they got that same curved design, but it's in a straight cabinet, blah, blah, blah. It's all about those little details. And that's how you separate yourself when you get to a point where you're like, eh, diminishing returns. Yeah, it's not a huge jump from like, say these to the Perlissons. But if you listen to my show that yesterday, it was like, there's a difference for sure. The Perlissons are great. They're, they're, they're better than these, but it's not like 17 grand better. There is a difference and there are little details that make them better. And it's these little details that will make these better than say the current ultras that I have now or whatever. Right. Um, but that's what it's the attention to detail and stuff like that. And, and then like I was saying, like I said, in today's takeover Tuesday, I'm like, these are the speakers I want for my theater. These are what I'm going to get. When I do upgrade my speakers, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting three of these, you know, ultra evolution pinnacles across the front. Absolutely. I can't wait. And uh, I explained all that in the takeover Tuesday, but, but <laughs> yes, I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Keith. And that's why I saw her and I was like, I gotta, I got cause I know that's what people are thinking. But it, there is a science behind it, and it is meaningful, but at the end of the day, it's not like it's like, wow, they just revolutionized the world. Other people have done it too. But it is it's, what I really like about it is that attention to detail, and, and that's how I look at it. So, um, But, yeah, no, agree with you, Keith. Like I said, not, not picking on you, buddy. Um, but, yeah, so anything else, Steve? No, no, I don't think we're, we're just over, aren't we, our time, our allotted time? Yeah, so we've uh, we've done well. It's flown by again, <laughs> hasn't it? Oh man, yeah. yeah. Go have some dinner, and then I'll be on in like two and a half hours. I'll be on with Giles for a little bit. So you can <laughs> hopefully he's over. found some Wi-Fi by then. <laughs> I know. I hope he's not. Do I should do it from the car. <laughs> it's dark out. I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, this Streamyard doesn't work well with the uh, phone. I tried to join when I joined SVS on. Friday was it Thursday night when I joined them in their happy hour I tried to do it from my phone it didn't work and then I went right to my laptop and it's like, nailed it same Wi-Fi connection and, in Mike's house and yet you did you did it from the floor at CDO and it was fine yeah though the actual the phone was better there I think it was the phone maybe it wasn't maybe it was mm. the I walked around with a laptop I don't know I don't remember <laughs> no it was a phone it was a phone that was it it's when you cut yeah. out didn't it and then you joined it back yeah on that's the phone. right i left you hanging mm. no it was fine <laughs> that was funny was all righty <laughs> all right that's it thank you everybody thanks uh, mike john thanks for a great weekend uh patreon supporters thank you very much uh, as i've said before it wouldn't have been possible for me to even get there with the budget i'm under right now patreon sent me to chicago thank you very much the supporters did mm -hmm in all the years so thank you very much uh everybody in the chat great great chat watching everybody go in there um yes like jordan saying good night everybody thank you so much uh it's been a blast we will be back you can catch me over with giles in a little bit uh next tuesday the sweet <laughs> sweet sounds of shane on next week's takeover tuesday mm -hmm. so that's gonna i can't wait that's gonna be a lot of fun um i got a beef with him he doesn't like up. <laughs> yes. We already yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. it, but yeah, so that'll <laughs> be fun. Um, but yeah, have a great week, everybody. Uh, Steve, have a great week. John, if you're still in the chat, have a great week. Everybody, you know what you got to do? Go push play. What he said.
This has been a Hey Fred production with theme music by Jeff Bernhardt and Throne Vault Productions.